Good evening. Uh, welcome to the January 29th Deerfield Capital Improvement Plan Committee meeting. And we will uh, open the meeting at 525. 535. 535. 535, excuse me, 535. The first uh, thing on the agenda is we're going to take a couple minutes <clears throat> and review the minutes of our last meeting and then we'll be right with everybody else. I will just take this opportunity to um, open the Board of Selectmen's meeting at 535. I had already read through them, Jeff, and I just, just had the one correction that you also had. Right. When you, uh, on the minutes, on the backup generator for the Town Hall Police Department, on that vote, I believe it was a 5-2 vote with uh, two of us opposed and okay. five so in five in favor. Was, so it's a 5-2. So it was... It passed. Was, yeah. So you were opposed. Yes, I was. Yes. Okay. I, I make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. I think we have one more thing Allison I think we, brought up. We had discussed and just we did double check with the elementary school and we voted that and we all voted in favor of it. It's just the second step of what the elementary school was doing as far as the hardware update and the tile floor update. That is correct. So if we could amend that too. So you mean we, so we affirmed, reaffirmed the Three-year plan, three plan of the elementary school for the hardware oh, and I, the tile floor. We, we, I, I would think we would just want to say we revoted, we voted the second year. The second year of, of a three-year three plan. plan. I, I put down that that was six-zero because I abstained. Exactly six-zero. Because Allison did abstain, she wasn't here. I do have an update on that too. That was we'll the door to. hardware and, and flooring. And flooring. And flooring. flooring. Yeah. Vinyl flooring, and so the and the what was the amount of the the door the hardware was year. twelve five for the second year, twelve thousand five hundred, and the flooring replacement was seventeen thousand, and that's part of a three year plan. So next year will be one more year, should be the last year for that. And the vote was six, six, zero. six oh. with one abstain. Which was me, Allison. Okay. And I suppose we probably should introduce ourselves so everybody in the audience will know. <coughs> uh, Jeff Upton, I'm co chair of the Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, Skip Sobieski, Board of Assessors and Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, Jack Davey, I'm the co chair of the CIPC and also the secretary. Carolyn Ness, Select Board Representative on the CIPC. I'm Allison Vandervelden, um, CIPC member at large. Okay. Uh, Kevin, can we start with you here? And Kevin, can I have a quick question just before you get into the truck presentation? I just wanted to check on one thing that we had, and that was with the attendance building at the transfer station. Are you putting that off for yeah, the we're time being? Off right now, because what we want to do is we need to get the um, uh, contactors taken care of first. Okay, so everything's right. laid out. Yeah, because I didn't want to go ahead. And, because we're still in the process of trying to figure out what the layout's going to be. Um, and I don't want to go ahead and just put money into something we're just not going to do anything with. And uh, so we need to wait to see what's going to happen. Okay. Everything has to play out first. All right. So for us as a committee, That's we can just simply put that on a hold and take no action at this time. That is correct. That would be the attendance shed on top of the existing trash compactor. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Kevin, okay. is, yep. that, is that safe enough right now? I'm sorry? Is that safe enough to go another year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, the worst case scenario, if I had to do any reinforcing, um, I can do some reinforcing from the bottom. Okay. Okay. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, right after July, we're going to be able to have that compactor out of there, which is going to make a big difference too. So. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. 
Okay, Kevin, so, could you please, we, we, so everybody knows, we had uh, asked Kevin at our last meeting if he could provide some additional information on a highway uh, snow plow truck, dump truck uh, for a purchase. So, and he is gonna be doing a presentation tonight and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm Kevin Scarborough, I'm DPW uh, superintendent and also I have with me is uh, Chuck Willer, who is our mechanic foreman, um, and he does a lot of my purchasing. Um, then we also have Jason Page, uh, representative from Patriot. Um, so if you have any questions as far as the cabin chassis is concerned, afterwards you can go ahead and, and ask. We'll open up the floor to questions. And then uh, John Dwyer from JC Madigan, who is uh, the person that basically puts all the accessories on the truck, the bodies, the plows, the hydraulics. Um, and what I'd like to do, if, if we could, is I'd like to give a quick little, and it's not very long, quick little PowerPoint. It's going to give everybody a, uh, a good idea of where we're at, where we've been, where we're going to, and where we should be, mm -hmm. if that's all right. Is okay with that? So I don't yep. That's what we're looking for. Kevin, I just think it's wonderful you're doing a PowerPoint. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. Together, so. So, so all this is warming up. Um, again, like, I think we're trying to do, never mind the chair. All right, so obviously uh, today is 2018, 129, and we're here to talk about uh, why the equipment is spec for our needs and why we're looking at new versus used. Um, information provides the facts and as well as opinions from a variety of dealers, individuals that have experience working with on the vehicles listed above and contain any time intended for reference uses only. That's our little disclaimer that was thrown in there. All right, so why is it important that you have a properly spec piece of equipment? Would you go ahead and you go out and buy something that's gonna last you two years, or are you gonna spend another $50 and have something that's gonna last you four years? So here's an example, okay? Back in 2013, we went ahead and purchased the loader. Uh, it was supposed to be equivalent to a 544. Um, I'm not gonna really completely get into the whole thing, but the piece of equipment that we ended up getting um, was, was too small. It, it was not equal to a uh, 544, we had instances where we've had people almost get hurt by trying to utilize some of the equipment. Um, so what we ended up doing is, um, actually I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I can't take credit for this one, this is gonna be completely and totally Chuck. Chuck beat on these people, He first he started on the, uh, uh, the dealer themselves and we weren't getting satisfaction, they'd come up and they'd go ahead and they say, okay, well we will turn up the, the hydraulic pump a little bit. Okay, well, I thought the whole reason why you kept the hydraulic pump pressures down was because you were having failures. So now you go ahead and, and, you're, and you're increasing it. So now we're gonna start having failure right off the top. So you're gonna guarantee this thing the rest of our lives? Well, then of course, all of a sudden you start getting backpedaling. And then all of a sudden everything just kind of funneled down and not really a whole lot was happening. So Chuck continued and continued and continued. So he didn't, didn't get any satisfaction there. So then he ended up going to directly to the manufacturer. And then after, what, probably about four months, Chuck? Yep. Four, four or five months, roughly, um, they finally came, they being Caterpillar, decided that the piece of equipment that we had did not feed our, did not meet our specifications, as there are a few other um, instances further here in the PowerPoint explaining, you know, what we were, what we were expecting, emails back and forth. So there was, there was no confusion whatsoever. It was, it was just an underpowered piece of equipment. So again, the long and the short is, is, is Chuck just kept getting into them, getting into them, and then finally they ended up showing up and brought us a brand new machine and took our old one back with upgrades of approximately fourteen dollars to $16,000 worth of upgrades um, and said, please stop calling us. So because Chuck was able to do what he does extremely well, uh, we were able to go ahead and get another piece of equipment. So kind of the point, what I'm trying to get at is, is in the past, a lot of places have said, well, you know what, we're, we're gonna give you this piece of equipment. And their mentality at that point is, you know what, you're a municipality, you're gonna be happy just to get whatever you get. 
Well, that's not our theory. We get what we're supposed to get. We get what we expect. We get what we need. And the reason why we get what we need is because it's going to perform to do the job that we need it to do for the people of the town. Because the people of the town, as far as I'm concerned, are the customers. Because without them, I mean, we don't have a job. So the long and the short is we are there for the people, be it obviously just a regular maintenance, but you have to make sure that we maintain our things properly. Because if we don't, now you've got fire, police, and EMS that can't do their jobs properly because they can't get from point A to point B very specifically during snowstorms and ice storms and things like that. Uh, here's just some documentation you, going back and forth. Um, I do have some handouts here of this PowerPoint if everybody looks, wishes to look at it afterwards. Uh, and again, this is just proof of the email going back and forth on the 930 that was delivered in 2013. Um, so when we started specking on a truck, this last set of trucks that, that Sean actually got um, in truck was very instrumental in, in doing the specifications. The one on the left-hand side is, is one of our newer trucks, which is a 2007, and then we're looking at the 2014 Freightliner. When you're looking at the differences between the two, um, you know, the transmissions are pretty much the same, the axle rates are pretty much the same, but when you look at the front axle, the rear axle, and the GVW, they're, they're better. And the reason why they're better or higher is because they're, they're going to be able to withstand the job. You know, would you go ahead and buy a half-ton pickup truck knowing full well you're going to haul two tons of stuff every single day? That would be foolish. That's why you go ahead and you upgrade to where you need to be. The problems we were having on the, on the freight liner on the left-hand side was underpowered on the hills, it was overweight and loaded, the M2 didn't come with extended frame, um, low weight plow frame, and the steel body had to be repainted and it basically cost us about $4,500 to sandblast it and repaint it. Uh, going on the newer one that we presently have now, uh, it's better on the hills, it's better payload, less uh, chance of overweight. Because realistically, we will get pulled over between point A and point B, between Sunderland and here, by mass truck team. And if we're overweight, we will get a ticket. We don't get a free pass because we're a municipality. We have to abide by, on the rules, all the same rules and regulations that mass DOT, that, uh, DOT puts out, or uh, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Um, more stability, less obviously less uh, chance of tipping. Uh, stainless steel body is easier to clean, it won't rot, repainting is not a worry, and basically saves you about $10,000 over life expectancy. Stainless steel body has the potential to re chassis in the future, and the extended front was be able to put a full uh, heavy duty plow hitch on the front. One of the issues, again, we had on, on the other one, it didn't have the extended, so we've got a lighter duty plow on that. So it's, again, the truck itself is taking a pounding because it really isn't spec to what we actually do. Um, we went from, uh, from 250s to a 350s for, for, our, for our pickups. Um, to the 250s, they were light, underpowered, really couldn't push the snow on them, small eight-foot plow, no sander, and really couldn't tow much of their equipment. You got a higher GVW, tow capacity, um, heavier power terrain, drive terrain, handled better, be able to push, poly sander, and reduce our repairs. Um, we ended up replacing the the one ton dump truck with a 550 dump truck um, last year. Again, because as we, as we proved last year, we had a piece of equipment that was not for our use. It, it did not meet our use, I should say. Um, it was underpowered. We had transmission issues, um, literally because what we were trying to do, sometimes we did overload it. And just wear and tear on it, it, it ended up, literally ended up popping uh, um, the studs off of the rear axle. Um, and we actually hit a house. But again, yeah, long story short is, is that's the reason, the mentality we're looking at going behind, going from a 250, or excuse me, from a 350 dump truck to a 550 dump truck. It suits our needs better. So back in 2011, um, 14, the town asked 14. us. 14. 14? Yeah. Uh, 2014. Sorry, 2014. Uh, the town asked to go ahead and ask for a five-year outlay. Um, we put together a 23-year outlay. So with that being said, this right here lets everyone know that this is what our anticipations are. This is the equipment that we have. So we're going on the theory right now of our larger trucks, we're going about 20 years. Equipment, 20, 25 years, you know, like loaders and things like that. Pickup trucks, about 15 years, excuse me, 10 years. Um, so that's the general um, 
replacement schedule is, is what we put together, which is uh, industry standards. So as you go along, you can look to see that you know, a lot of time was spent to go ahead and put together. You asked the questions, we tried to go ahead and provide it, but we gave you more than what you're looking for. You asked for five, we gave you 23. So why new versus used? If you go ahead and look on the new, the left-hand side, there's a new vehicle, 20,000, 200,000 is a five-year warranty. So as you go along down through, you can match on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side used is ballpark 80,000 for a 10-year-old truck. And this estimates were based upon uh, information gathered from Western Mass uh, municipalities and expenses on municipalities. So as you go down through the list, I don't need to uh, read each single one of them, but as you go down, you look at the truck cost, 240, 231. Trade value is like next to nothing. Um, labor and overtime, which is what we have to put in, is 4,800. You go in to use, is 14,500. Towing, if we do have to go ahead and tow them, again, these are estimates by the municipalities, 1,600 compared to 6,000. Um, it's, it's, again, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer for me going from new to used. Um, used is you go ahead and you buy something, what are you getting? Why are you getting it? Why do they trade it? And I know that there are some people out there that go ahead and, and treat their trucks super prime, um, treat them like they're babies, and, and they're, they're the best thing that actually rolled down the road. Few and far between, and how long, long will they last because of our procurement rules and regulations that I don't have to do. So let's just say hypothetically, right now, we find this cream puff truck. So now we're in January, February, March, April, May, June. So I'm looking at five full months that somebody would have to go ahead and hold on to that piece of equipment if we could get them to hold on to it for us. Because obviously a municipality, they're gonna, we're gonna try and beat them down as low as possible and they'd probably be able to get a higher price off of somebody from the street than they would from us. The only way to do that is for them to go ahead and, and because when these guys, and they can explain it better, is when they bring in a piece of equipment, um, they have to pay on that. It, it's not just a piece of equipment that comes in and trade in and sits on their lot and goes absolutely nowhere. Um, they have to pay on that. So inadvertently, if we were being, looking to have a piece of equipment very specific for them to hold on to us, for us, um, we're, we're gonna pay. We're gonna pay that extra charge. Now let's go with the theory of all right, so I'm gonna write these specs so tight that this is the truck I'm looking for and this is what I want. So then we go ahead, we put it out to bid because procurement laws, that's what we have to do. All of a sudden it comes back in, it's all said and done, and all of a sudden John Jones shows up with the identical truck that's absolutely beat to hell, that's garbage, but it meets all the specifications and it's $3,000 cheaper. Are we required to buy that? And if we would, and so at that point in time, I'm sure there's probably some justifications you can probably go ahead and, and, and put in there to make sure that doesn't happen. But again, this is just one more step that you don't want to have to go through, one more, one more hoop. Municipalities are all outfitted with all season bodies, use year round, front wing, uh, central live systems, automatic transmissions, um, front mounted made to spread sand, salt at all times moving or stopped. Huge trucks are built for different applications. Um, again, the, the PTO, there's no PTO gear. A lot of them, they do not accept live hydraulic systems. Um, and again, it's, it's the used is, the technology is, is much better now. And again, we're looking at something, this is an investment for the town. We're not looking for something that we're just gonna go ahead and say, okay, well, well this will get us by for three more years. Okay, well, in three more years, now I got another truck. So what am I gonna do? Well, buy two new trucks, two used trucks? And then, then all of a sudden I get down again to my next because of we've done the capital plan. We've said this is what the replacement plan is. Now all of a sudden I get into my third truck that's due. Now I buy another used truck. So now I've got three used trucks. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. I, it's. So safety. Uh, safety and livelihood of residents being compromised and breakdown, not flying or salting. Truck fails, uh, not making it down the road, emergency response, not able, uh, not to make phone calls to make residents. <clears throat> Life expectancy of the equipment, plow trucks should be spec for the town's needs, such as engine, transmission, rear end, GBW, and the specific plow routes. Used plows have been used specifically for other different towns, 
It may not have been the right horsepower. Um, the Berkshire County, you know, they may have different rear end ratios because of their hills and things like that. Again, a lot of times when people build a truck, they build it for their locale. Um, you go to um, you go to Vermont, okay? And what is it, Westminster? Yeah. West Min Westminster, years. Vermont. Five years. They trade their trucks in every five years. They purposely bring the GV down a little bit, so that way they get a little bit cheaper money on the springs. They bring the horsepower down a little bit. They don't change the oil. They add the oils in five years. They turn them in, low miles. They get a $50,000 on average trade-in towards another new truck. And it's because they go out, they pound the hell out of them, and then they know after a certain amount of time, it's gonna start costing the town more and more money to, to maintain this truck, and it's just not worth it. Uh, Chuck's got maintenance software. He's able to completely go down through some cost histories of 99, you know, so far uh, since, what? Two years. Two years. So two years, we've already spent just over eight grand on truck 99. Can I speak on that? Yeah, please do. So with the maintenance program that we're trying to implement now, with the software, we got the building, we're able to maintain these. This software is going to come in handy down the road as you get more data. I mean, you can see how it breaks it down. One thing that I do lapse that I'm going to change now is my labor or a helper's labor. We never calculated labor because we were just trying to cut out-of-pocket expense out of his budget. We just thought, well, my time's generated anyway, so we never did that. So some of these numbers are low. But what this is actually giving you, if you look at this, this history, is the second column in, you're actually seeing your, your price per mile. Like right now, say 99 is at 93 cents. You can see 07 is creeping up over 78 cents. Now that don't include the extensive amount of work 99 had into it prior to the new building. I mean, that truck, we had to rebuild the whole conveyor system and everything. Now if you click onto the next screen, these here are five-year-old trucks, coming up on five-year-old trucks. And you can see the top number there at 15 cents a mile, okay? And you see the bottom number of that other new truck at 98 cents a mile. Well, that is because obviously that truck well, we know that truck was in an accident, so it, it consumes the $12,000 bill. So if you, lose a, if you buy a new truck, say an 07 and, or an 09 used truck, and it needs injectors or something like that, you're going to add that $10,000 in there real quick. And you can see what it did to these two identical trucks. It jacked your, your um, dollar per mile almost to $1 per mile. So. By tracking costs of history, it's going to start to show you your trucks that are being more expensive and repairs going down the road, and, and you can set your standards on when that truck is due to be being replaced. Um, again, that's a five-year-old truck. The first five years were under warranty. You're down to 15 cents a mile. I mean, that's, that's next to nothing this truck is costing you after you purchased it over the last five years. So it's just something to take into effect of where your repair dollars actually add to your tail end of the cost of this vehicle. And again, so now if we keep 99 before next plow season, that truck is going to need fifteen dollars to $20,000 because it is so rotted, it's just got work, it's going to have to get done. The hydraulic, all the hydraulic um, hose fittings ends, they're just ready, they're ready to blow. All the piping underneath it's all rotted. Um, the, the spool valve's all rotted. We got pictures on that. So here's your estimated. As where that truck stands right now, I went into my program and I created a fake work order. And I added $15,000 to the history of this piece of equipment. Now you can see that after we go ahead and we repair this truck 99 for next plow season, you're going to be at 267 a mile. Again, you're starting to get to an age of a 20 year old truck. Now, if that injector pump goes, injectors go, you're talking thousands of dollars on trucks. And, and that's why we have some people here, they'll tell you that the mileage that our trucks reflect on them are not the mileage of the wear and tear on them. So it's just a good way to present to you where this truck's gonna be in another year if we don't act upon it now. So, so is your data indicating that these trucks should be replaced sooner than 20 years? 
Well, data, that's going to be wise, hard to say. I mean, yeah. you're going to get a, you, you, you would obviously get a, a larger trading value. Correct. Well, that, that's something else that I'd like to speak about too as we go <laughs> through this. Um, I, I tried to just kind of put this together in order to kind of explain to you where we are working hard as a highway department to try to better the life expectancy of our equipment, but to be able to have the understanding of why when we ask for something, are we asking for it? Because now I just showed you on paper, if you do the math, that truck right now is costing you a dollar a mile. And if we do it now, you're gonna be at $3 a mile by the end of winter that you'll never get back. Uh, well, I think what Jack was asking though is, um, it's, I think this is fabulous that you're doing this, but when you're managing this, does that mean instead of just saying that we're gonna keep it for 20 years, which has been our, the way we've been doing it, mm -hmm. would, should we, should we based on that, should we trade it in earlier to get a better trade in before some of these dollars increase? That's, I, af that's I, after we get past. <clears throat> getting this truck through. Right. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, this is really wonderful information, and I think, I mean, it helps explain what's well, going on. Well, as we get to the, the other slides towards the end, I've, I've reached out to three different highway departments, three different areas that all have their opinions, and I'll explain to you what one guy is doing up in Beckett, and, and you're absolutely right. Now, it's all fine and dandy to sit here and say, hey, should we shorten our span up and dump them after 15 years to get some money out of them, that's fine. But you're also now, you're talking about buying a 10-year-old truck. So if, if you're talking about, if I mean, I think we're still here because we came to the, you guys have well, implicated that you wanted to well, search for you. I wasn't talking use. about a used truck. I'm talking about buying a new truck. Right. Rather than on a 20-year schedule, on a maybe a 15-year schedule so that, so that now your trading value is... I, rather than I would agree to that, <coughs> but we have to get to that point. That you're also showing the, that, the, that the maintenance costs accelerate mm -hmm. when the truck gets to... Uh, Absolutely, gets and that's why I gave you some scenarios. Old. I mean, you, if you go back one slide and you look at that 07, you can see that it's creeping up. Now, 07 is a 10-year-old truck. So you look at 07 and, and you're at 78 cents a mile. A lot can change that number, but I'm just saying you can see how that's creeping up as it hits its 10-year part. That's because last year and the year before, we had um, we lost six injectors. Okay, that was $3,500, just parts. Not to mention pull top and more part, put them in. Shortly after that, the Huey pump went. Had to go down the Patriot. They, they, they put the Huey pump in. Um, and a lot of them repairs now, and, and Jay might be able to speak a little of that for me, is we found out that a little bit down the road, we had another injector go bad. Well, if you buy a Huey pump, they call it a Huey pump and a six pack all at the same time, it's like $8,000, but then you can get an extended warranty for $200 that'll stretch it out for six years. So, but you don't, what I'm saying is you'll have to take it to a dealer for that to happen. So 07, two years ago, started losing injectors and having problems. So it started costing the town thousands of dollars. So yeah, if you were at like a 10 to 15 or a 15 year replacement plan, you're gonna be less subject to the cost of that. Not to mention um, 10 year old truck. We just dumped another six, six grand in it for um, Greg's sandblast and paint the frame and the body. Because we need to keep that truck for 10 years. In 2012, when I first started, I think it was my first summer, it's got a removable conveyor. Well, it was so rotted that it swelled up and uh, Mike Phillips was the operator at the truck at the time. The, the, the side dump would not lift up. It just would not. The, there's a hinge in there and it just pinched it because it was just so swelled up with rot. So that there, we had to rip all that apart. We had to re, refabricate all that stuff. That was probably another 2000. So yeah, you know, these repairs are kind of hidden in Kevin's maintenance budget and you don't see that until they're brought to you. But now that we have this software and we start putting things in there, um, you're gonna be able to track your costs, whether they're body related. You know, you, you can separate it by body, by failures, by your regular maintenance schedules. And, and then you can start to really put together a maintenance plan for your capital outlay. But the question of whether we should shorten up 
the 15 to the 20 year, or 20 to a 15 year rather, is not if we're going to buy a used truck. Well, no. You know, no, I'm only talking okay. about, I'm only talking about mm. new trucks. So, Chuck, quick question here. Sure. Sandblasting and painting, though, that's just a uh, standard uh, maintenance procedure for most towns, correct? Uh, at some uh, point in time with their truck? At some point with the steel, and that's why um, that brings to another conclusion. Freightliner has all aluminum cabs. Right. I was okay, and fiberglass that. hoods. So like the new trucks we built, the stainless steel was a little more money. I think it was mm -hmm. about 10, I don't know, John, what are the stainless about 10 grand more? Closer to 16. Okay, so 16 grand more. You're gonna dump six grand into set or five grand now, and then in another five years, you're gonna dump another five grand into that truck. So yes, it's sandblasting and painting is standard. Mm -hmm. However, this day and age, we're going with stainless bodies that all these towns are because they're using treated salt. You know, back in the day, it was just sand. Right. Then you start putting some salt with your sand. Now, now you're running straight salt. Well, now when it gets too cold, you're using a treated salt, mm -hmm. which is like a calcium or magnesium. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. So by going stainless, you're paying up front, but essentially the next time I might just have to buy a chassis, send both trucks over to my body guy and have him take this body and put it on there. And then you're not gonna paint that body because it's all aluminum and it's fiberglass. So you're getting away from that part of the maintenance of the expense. You cannot, we are not set up, and I'm pretty sure it's illegal for us to sandblast and paint in our own yard. So you're at the mercy of somebody else for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, can, I, can I just ask, um, you know, we have been a little bit concerned about going to all salt and because that makes um, the water much more saline, you know, a higher saline content. So therefore, you know, friendlier to mosquitoes that breed like triple E and stuff, more salt marsh conditions. So. We were thinking, hopefully, sometime down the line, we were going to get um, brining equipment maybe as a pilot program through um, the Department of Ag. What, this brining equipment, Kevin, that we've been talking about that- right. so, you know, so basically the brine equipment will is, the, is, is- What it's, will that do to this? All right, so, so the brine, and it is really getting away from the truck, but I'll make this real quick. Long story short, brine, all we're using the brine for is it's put down, keep the the snow from bonding to the road. So it's pre-treating? Presently, presently, yes, okay. correct, pre-treating. So presently right now, we pre-treat with regular salt. The only other way that you would do it with the brine would be to go ahead and, and spray it down, very okay. similar to like what they use on 91. So ultimately, you, you still would use some salt even though, we're cutting, even though we're cutting back? Correct. Okay. Correct. It's, it's like 20, just... 23 point, or excuse me, 28.3 <coughs> or 28.5 percent salt to, um, in volume to the water okay so so you, you're definitely talking a lot less salt per but again okay that's but you wouldn't ever eliminate salt we would just you reduce the amount of salt we use it's possible that is correct okay all right so the town of gill went out and bought a used truck um 2009 sterling power angle nine foot wing plow all season Approximately 32 grand for the truck. They put about 74,000 into it. They're continually working on it. Estimates spending more time working on it. They're not actually using it. Plow was junk. They had to buy a new one. There's another 12,000. Had multiple dash lights on, fumes in the cab, giving the operator headaches. Last two breakdowns, they had to leave the truck where it was, broken down in the road. To finish off the storm of the loader, losing a wing is like losing two trucks. Additional time to clear the roads resulted in an excess. Uh, unnecessary overtime, not to mention they actually had to go out and re pull the truck back in and then still had to go ahead and fix it. Again, not recommended for use. Town of Beckett. Okay, so this is going to kind of come a little bit more to what you were talking about. Um, Chris, the highway superintendent, put together all his maintenance records and he was able to prove uh, that a 10 year swap is more cost effective because after the trucks cost too much money to maintain and repair due to the increased amount of downtime, he found that after 10 years, they start to cost over 5,000 repairs with uh, adds approximately 50,000 to the truck on top of the purchase price as well as getting more for trade and not just scrap price, which if we go ahead and we trade in our truck right now, we will get probably 
what did we get? Two thousand dollars? I I don't know. Nine fifty thousand? Yeah. It's it's not much. <laughs> um uh, his pickup trucks, five years, loaders are 15. Uh, if there's one problem, if, if there's a problem with it, they'll go ahead and they'll get rid of it sooner. Uh, example he gave us is he has an 09 Sterling, ended up to be replaced, he lost the valve cover, I lost the valve, cost him over 15 grand to fix it last year. Let me just touch on that. Yep. So this is a guy I talked to for Beckett, um, and I got his number. He went back, how long did you say? Didn't he go back a long time or something? He went back to 1923 when the town first purchased their first fire truck and did the map going forward with all the capital improvement uh, purchases and um, created his capital plan from all those numbers uh, to justify to the town why replacing them on a 10-year cycle was more, more cost-effective. So. To answer your question about shorting it up, I mean, he's a guy to talk to if you ever wanted to. He did it for his town. He's actually talking about thinking about trying to do his next plan to see what you pay for a lease for seven years. And then you lease the, tr the truck and then you dump it to see if it's even more cost effective. And he's gone, like he said, he went back way, way, way deep into the town's records for repair. Um. I actually know him. He's on the Homeland Security with uh, Council with John and I, mm -hmm. and he's he is he's very sharp. He represents the highway, all the highway departments in and, Western Mass. And he said a lot of it is because you yeah. get that money, you get that trade in, it's, and same with the pickups. Um, and he's done his homework, so I mean it, he's proven it. He's proven it to his town, and that's why he's allowed to roll with it. So it, there it is proven out there. Yeah, he's pretty sharp. Uh, town of Granby, they had a uh, truck that was in real bad shape. They needed something short term. They bought something that was a couple years old, 2001 Sterling. Uh, new body install on it. Uh, they only bought because it was short term to fix. They would have the new body installed on the new chassis when the time is appropriate. Um, as the 2009 was getting fuel dilution and oil in the middle of the winter, sent to Peterbilt, changed all injectors, about $4,000. Still didn't fix it, sent it back. Another dealer's thousands later fixed it, but all that was downtime during the middle of the winter. Again, it used. Here's some uh, some quick photos of the existing truck that we're talking about right now. Um, this would be the, the right side of the frame rail. The tank you're seeing right there is the uh, hydraulic tank. If we are going to continue to use this truck, if we go any further, that tank is going to have to be replaced. Otherwise, I'm going to have an environmental headache because I'm going to have 35 gallons of fuel or uh, um, hydraulic fluid that's going to spill because the tank's already is rotting through. Here's some of our valves that are underneath there right now. Again, the piping, the hoses, everything, it's, it's just rotting. So, so that's why you can't get any money for those trucks. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. They're just they're, they're scrap. They've Literally, gone beyond, they've gone to the point. They've of gone the past the point scrap. of being worth anything besides scrap is what the problem is. That's the this right here is the inside of the um, inside of the bed or the, the dump body, um, and you can see the scaling that's down in the lower areas. If we go ahead and try to um, sandblast this, we'd probably be blowing through it. So it'll be a lot of patchwork. It'll be a lot of patchwork. Quick question, Kevin. How about the plow itself? Junk. Junk. Be Lucky it holds together. Be honest with you. Because it's it's, I mean, it's patched, and again, the only re you know you can sit there and and buy new stuff, and, and we can put it together, but it's already had its it's already done its thing, and and so when you when we put together our capital outlay plan, and you guys somewhat approve it, so to speak, we're looking at the future. I mean, there's no doubt that two years ago we're like we only got a couple more years. Do you think do you think it'll make it? And and when that question's brought to me, I says, Yeah, don't waste two thousand dollars on that bow body. As one thing goes, I'll try and get it together. Okay, I got a little bit of seepage over here. That's fine. There's plenty of rust to absorb some of that oil. I mean, so there there is things on there that you can replace. Same with the plow. You know, the whole back end of the plow. It's just all egged out from all the plowing. 
yeah, we can go ahead and have them fabricated. We can buy another one. But the question is, is if we're going to go buy our capital outlay, why do it? If we can make that truck last without dumping any more money into it, why do it? Now, if we knew we had to keep that truck for another five years, yes, we would have to sit there and say, let's just do it because it's not going to last a five year. But we're playing the mark as it goes according to what we've provided with you that you've asked of us is how long do we think we can make this last? Because just keep in the back of your mind, you can make anything last if you throw enough money at it. Well, so, I just, and, and I mean? also want to state that you remember that the capital improvement committee is <clears throat> simply making a recommendation or not making a recommendation. Correct. So it has to go to the finance, finance committee, the select board, and, and the eventually town the town tour. Okay. Correct. So, mm -hmm. so everybody understands the process here. Mm -hmm. One other question, or actually I have several, but one question as you were going through this and it kind of rang in the back of my mind, and I'm kind of like a cost average person, you know, if you're saying you're going to spend 200000 on a truck, it's supposed to last 20 years, 10000 a year, then you're going to have maintenance as you go through and on and on and on. If we are using some subcontractors to plow some of the town, mm -hmm. would we be better financially off to have the plowing of the town subcontracted out completely so the town doesn't have to be involved with that? that and right, that's just a question to right. Well that right there I couldn't I couldn't tell you because the simple facts I okay. couldn't I can't come up with an, an answer right now of exactly what that mm -hmm. cost would be. Right. Um, I mean, because realistically, I would I would have to go through and figure out everything. You know, all the different trucks, what the price of the different trucks are going to be, ballpark hourly rates, um, mm -hmm. and then from that point in time, uh, then then you're going to be subject to. And let's just say hypothetically, we go ahead and we, we get rid of some of the trucks. So now I'm, I'm I, I I don't have what I'm looking for to utilize during my summertime when I'm trying to take care of my dirt roads when I'm hauling my materials, all nine yards. And then the other thing is is now all of a sudden, everybody recognizes the fact that, hey, you know what, they can't plow their own roads. They're asking for us. So, you know what, <clears throat> they're going to pay for it. So, my question is, is in 10 years, what's the cost of a contractor going to be if we go ahead and, and we dump what we have? That would be my concern. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I understand that there's you know, pros and cons mm -hmm. to everything. I do understand that, but I am curious when we're looking at dollar mm -hmm. cost average here, mm -hmm. it does make you stop to think and say, hey, wait a second, right. you know, you know, is there is there another way? And that's all I'm asking. Well, I tell you what, hey, to be honest with you, I would absolutely love to be able to have the police department call me up and say, hey, roads are slippery, and roll over, hey, roads are slippery. I'll call the subcontractor. And then crawl back over and go back to bed. I would absolutely love that. But unfortunately, that's not my world right now. Can I touch on something? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. So the other thing about this truck that we're asking for that I drafted up a letter is one of the reasons we decided to go with a wing truck is there are certain roads that you use a wing guy on. And what we figured out, and this is only based on the past couple years estimates, what we figured out, like I wrote in the letter, is 20 plow rounds. Okay, that's not 20 plowing days, that's 20 plow rounds. So like this last storm, we plowed twice. So that's two rounds mm -hmm. in one storm. 20 plow rounds is an approximate $12,000 for 20 plow rounds to one contractor. Okay, and that's just to have a wing guy with that truck. Now, when these banks get high like they did that last storm, we usually sub out. Williams used to wing off all our roads because we really had no real way to do it. Um, you can try it with the grader, but you just spend days and days. And if you're yeah. going in between storms, it's just, it's just not meant for that. So mm -hmm. we winged off the bad roads and the other ones, they, they just get encroached. And so with that said, if you just take to improve the process of a wing truck and that wing truck can now do, serve as a dual purpose of two vehicles, now you're getting 12, you're not getting, but think of it as almost saving like $12,000 or saving that hourly rate of having somebody wing your thing off. So now you're doing it. So now you've got one truck going down a road as opposed to two. So when you're saving that money, that truck's going to pay for itself. Wing plow, body plow in 16 years. 
So when you go back and you say, hey, let's dump it in 15, well, that truck just paid for itself. Plus, you're probably going to see, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 grand on trade-in towards the next truck. Or you might say to yourself, man, that's a good body. That wing stuff's in good shape. And, and your outfitter will say, no, that's good. Why don't we just put it on a chassis? So that, that was the thought process of moving forward with a wing truck. Mm -hmm. Because a wing is only going to cost you, and, and I, I got a low number out of the Greater Boston Police Count, uh, later Greater Boston Police Council, Council contract of like 16 and a half to 18 and a half, depending. So that's why I just said 22, you know, just to mm -hmm. kind of put more to it. But realistically, you're only spending 18 grand to put a wing on a truck, and you're gonna save 12 grand there. And then we, this all came up when somebody asked, how much to put a wing on a truck we already got? Well, I already did that homework. It was gonna cost almost $40,000 to put a wing on our existing truck. And that included me doing a lot of the extra work as, as in moving the bodies, relocating my air tanks, relocating hydraulics. So you're talking a week in the shop with me, which is fine. I mean, I'll ask anybody. I'll run torches, I'll burn rod all day long. I'd much rather do that than change oil. That's my forte, but it's not cost effective. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put together the proposal of 99s coming up. Why don't we spend a little bit of extra money, get the wing truck, and now you can increase the response time and clean up town and you have something to do your own shelving on all your roads. Um, Kevin, at the last meeting, one of the um, questions was the amount of mileage on it looked like it wasn't getting a lot of use. What wouldn't you be doing if you didn't have such a big truck like that? I mean, what, how, what services wouldn't you be delivering during the off season of plowing if you didn't have that size truck? Well, you, you normally we utilize these things because they're a front conveyor, and the advantage of the front conveyor is we use those for a lot of the uh, um, side of the road uh, projects. So that way, when we're when we're doing our uh, our edges, mm -hmm. because you know we've got areas that kind of slope down, and we have to fill them back in because you know obviously the edge of the road is supposed to take water. That's what the edge of the road is designed to do. Um, but sometimes the road it gets it's down too deep. So that's that's one of the one of the things that we end up using it for. Um, and then obviously, you know, we, we haul material with it. Um, it's, yeah, it's a dump truck. We use it for construction. So you would say that you probably use it, if not weekly, on a real regular basis? Oh, certainly. Okay. I think what a lot of people struggle with, Kevin, to be honest with you, is when you look at the mileage and you average it out, you're looking at 3,000, 3,500 miles, you know, mm -hmm. a year. And, People say, oh, what the heck, you know, right. that's not a big deal. Right. No, that's low mileage, but I understand what you're saying as far as the wear and tear and the pounding that, it, you know, snow plows do take. Does anybody have any questions for the two gentlemen that we dragged out of their houses? <laughs> Especially I, one that I came do. from the I other end of the state. I was wondering as far as base price on chassis and then as far as the actual build out and what's being built out a couple quick questions and maybe you answer them as we were discussing here but i was wondering about cab structure was it aluminum cab structure and then stainless steel body i was wondering about uh transmission is it an automatic transmission yeah. or manual transmission and uh i i understand that there is some emissions concern back in 2008, 2010 roughly. I understand that supposedly those are all worked out. So we, looking at a new like truck, won't be running out. into a <laughs> issue there. So I know that's a lot, but maybe if you could address that or if you'd like me to repeat any of that. I couldn't even catch I guess that. I'll start the, the, with the base price of the, the chassis. Um, depending on options, uh, you can start at 70,000 and the sky's the limit. Um, a good average for towns with similar trucks to what they're currently running, which you guys are currently running, uh, you're, you're probably in the 100 to 110 range for the chassis. Okay. That's with a nine liter engine. Mm -hmm. it's same truck, uh, automatic transmission, uh, same specs as that you saw on the slide. Okay. Uh, the aluminum cab, uh, as far as corrosion, haven't seen any issues in cabs uh, going back to the 80s. Of course, there's issues, but the aluminum definitely holds up longer to the elements. 
And what's the price difference between the two? As far as uh, between an aluminum and a there's there's no aluminum. choice for steel with oh, okay. a freight liner. Okay. It's strictly aluminum. Okay. Uh, the emissions, uh, that, that's uh, the last thing I remember you asking. Um, in 08, when EPA, uh, 07 mm -hmm. ended and EPA 08 eight started, um, you saw a lot of manufacturers uh, lowering their emissions through heat, uh, through EGR systems. So the EGR systems took the exhaust gas and put them back into the engines and between 60 and 80 percent of that exhaust gas was getting recycled. Well, I don't know anything that operates properly with soot and carbon going back through the, which is supposed to be fresh air. Um, once 2012 hit, the SCR system, selective catalytic reduction, uh, went into place with most manufacturers and instead of using the EGR system to create zero NOx, they used the chemical reaction in the exhaust system. As opposed to burning everything off with heat, it was done with a chemical reaction. That's why you see the extra tank on the trucks, the diesel exhaust fluid. So the trucks going forward seem to have everything worked out from 2012 and beyond. So a, a lot of people's holdback for purchasing new trucks is the horror stories that you've heard from 08 to 12. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the economy through those times. Very few people were buying. And what is out there is very undesirable. One, because it was during those emission years. And the, the, the just the quantity and the quality of any vehicles that you could buy are very limited. Very limited. Yeah, it is. When you were talking used trucks, if you noticed a lot of those 2009s towns bought, I mean, the reason those trucks became available is because they had so many headaches with them that eventually, they, I can think of about, I mean, I've, I've been, I, I go every place from the Connecticut River to the the Atlantic Ocean and all the state of Rhode Island I cover, and I've been in every town in between. And, you know, there's a lot of towns that have tried to buy these used trucks because the prices are so uh, mm -hmm. good on them. But what they're doing is they're just picking up bad heritage, you know, because the other towns have just, uh, just given up on trying to keep the thing running. Because, uh, you know, it was a learning curve. I don't know if you know anything about the industry, but the industry fought it right to the end, and the government had the regulations, and everybody thought they would back off at the last minute. And then when it came to shove, they all had to put something on the street to pass emissions, or they would have had to go out of business. So a lot of trucks came out in the street that really, dependability was awful on them. I mean, it was really almost putting the whole industry on its, on its ear. Uh, so now they're finally starting to catch up with it, and you're seeing better technology out there. But it left a big, vast area of used trucks that no one wants. And, uh, you know, you can take a risk on one of them, but uh, I can think of one town, I, I know the mechanic there, he's a very, very good mechanic. Uh, I would trust him, which is why I trust him working on my own car. Uh, it's, the, it's the town of Pepperell. I mean, they just paid $46,000 for a new cab and chassis. The guy looked at the truck, they kept it uh, first storm, they were out, the guy came back in, he was complaining that uh, the thing was smoking, they pulled the dipstick and the entire engine was full of coolant. You know, if it had been caught early, probably could have fixed it, but you know, where the antifreeze got to contaminate the barons, the engine was, was gone. I mean, they had to put, you know, eight, nine thousand dollars into luckily found a used engine that they could put in it. But uh, I mean, those are the risks you take with a used piece of equipment. Could you uh, possibly give me a little <clears throat> synopsis of, of the build out of the truck itself and the costs involved? You know, you had talked about the chassis being maybe around 110, yeah. uh, or what they were looking for. What does the build out involve and what dollar well, amounts are we talking about as we go through with the add-ons? We get a chassis that's just basic frame and cab. 
Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we, we add the hydraulics to it, you know, whether it's going to be run off the transmission or the front of the engine. And then, uh, which is very unique to the industry because you're running live hydraulics where, like a construction truck, when it, when it operates the dump body, it pulls over and engages its PTO in neutral and then operates the body. But it doesn't operate the body while it's driving. Mm -hmm. Municipal use, you have a sander, and a sander has got to run while the truck's doing 25, 30 miles an hour. So you have a very unique situation. You need live hydraulics, and the only way you can do that is to run, you have to run off something that runs one-to-one -one with the engine, related to the engine speed. So in the old days, they would put a damper on the front of the engine, and then you would run a shaft, and the pump would run off the front of the motor. The problem with that is when you, when you, as your emissions came into effect, the air intercooling and all that, your radiators became bigger and bigger and bigger. So now that access to that, to that damper is harder to get at. So Allison, you know, with the automatic transmissions, they decided to, to finally design a transmission that you could actually come off the side of it. And uh, so you have that choice now. If the truck isn't acceptable to a front mount pump, you've got to put it on the side. So we mount that. And then you have a valve body, which is made up of all segments that operates each individual function on the truck. Mm -hmm. So that gets stacked and mounted, hydraulic tank. Then you mount a dump body, obviously, or you know, if it's a slide-in sander, if it's a fixed mount sander, if it's a combo body, then the sand is just built directly into the body. And then the plow frame. Uh, so when you start looking at some of these things to, to install them, I sold trucks for 11 years, I was a mechanic for 10, I've been around, I, I've done this for 16 years, I've sold truck parts, I've, I've done, there isn't anything I haven't done on a truck. And I can tell you, well, I'll give you a perfect example, the, town, uh, the city of Gardner just bought two chassis, okay, they bought them from a lease company. Now I just noticed up on that board there that, that your old truck has a 13,000 pound front axle, okay? Our plows require a 14,500 pound axle. Mm -hmm. So I go down to the city of Gardner and I look at the trucks. There's no way to put, put any kind of hydraulics onto the front of the truck. So you have to rely upon the transmission. Now luckily these trucks had PTO provisions on them. Most transportation engine or trucks do not because they don't, they don't, they don't spend the extra money because they don't run a PTO. And the weight, it's a weight related concern where they're, they're interested in hauling freight based on pounds. So they eliminate that gearing. Plus they had no parent frame extension on the front. So your frame rails come to the front of the bumper and they end right at the radiator. So at that point, now you're limited, like your, old, like your older truck, you have to only put a certain type of plow hitch on there. Yeah. And now you're limited to a certain plow. Which, in, in, is it optimum for what these guys are doing when you're moving five, six, ten inches of snow? No, absolutely not. It's something that you do on a private vendor's truck because that's the only thing you can put on, you know. So you, you really want a, a frame extension. Now these guys are talking about a wing. I was going to now, ask about that as far as frame. Well, think about a wing. So now you're talking, you're talking about a 300 to 400 pound tower that the wing hangs off of. You've got about a 1400 pound plow frame on the front of it, and then you got a 3,000 pound plow, plow in the front. Now, you don't want to bolt that to something that's attached by bolts. You want something that's a piece of steel that runs from one end to the other. And you're not going to find that in a used chassis out there unless it was at, unless it was ordered for that application, you know, for, mm, for that. Specifically, right. Because we won't mount a wing on a truck that, that does not have a parent frame extension on it because it just won't hold up. We know it won't. Mm -hmm. it'll, break the, it'll break the cross members of the truck. And I know for a fact it will because I've seen it. Uh, also, you have, you know, other dimensions that come into play with the, with the back tower of the wing mounts. You know, if it's, a, if it's a leveling wing, which has two towers, you need 16 inches of, of frame space between the body and the cab. Because you've got to take both frame rails and literally make it into a, 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 a triangular brace. Because if, 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 well, think about it, if you've got a big tower sitting there wiggling mm -hmm. and you're going down the road hitting potholes, it's going 40 miles an hour, Right. If you've only got one of your frame rails <laughs> holding that thing, it's doing this while the other one stays still. So you've got a metal cross member in between, it, it'll snap your bell housing, it'll snap. So I guess I'm getting... 
too far here, but what I'm saying is if the, if the truck isn't constructed properly, there's a lot of things we can't right, even do to, be able to handle. You know, uh, but the point I was trying to make on that 13.5 front, and a lot of people don't understand this, is when, when you build a truck, okay, mm -hmm. and the manufacturer rates that front axle for 13,500 pounds, he's not just rating that axle at that weight. It's the, it's the lowest denominator in the front end. So it, your steering box is rated at 13.5. Your brakes are rated at 13.5. Your, your kingpins are rated at 13.5. Your tires have to be rated at 13.5. And that's the only way you can get that rating. Mm -hmm. So think about it. You've got a truck with a 13.5 front end, and you're running a 14, and, and you've got a plow that requires a 14.5. Now you want to put a wing on the top of that. So now you're, now say you're 20, 30 percent overloaded. What happens if the steering box can't turn the truck? Because right. that steering box is rated to operate that front end. It's not a car. You know, people yeah. try to mix them up. A car, a car could probably carry a thousand pounds more than it carries. But a truck usually is right at its maximum all the time. And when you were talking about wear and tear on a truck, that's the part people don't understand. 3,000 miles of carrying two people in a vehicle on a suitcase is a hell of a lot different than a truck that's rated at 48,000 pounds carrying probably 52,000 pounds. Right. You know, it's... Right. I, I guess that brings me to a point of next question. Is it really cost effective <coughs> for the town with a wing plow because of the additional wear and tear on the truck? You know, do, will we be using that wing plow enough I guess is a question to warrant the additional cost plus the additional wear and tear on that truck as far as maintenance over the years, whether you keep it 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. Right. Like I, 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 you know, because wouldn't the, wouldn't the wing plow, from what was you know, kind of like described, wouldn't that put additional pressure on throughout that truck? Yeah. Okay. The, the, the thing with the wing is you don't have one. You don't really know you right. need it. But I can tell you this, you take a town like Marblehead, okay? You remember the two, three years ago when we had 60 mm -hmm. inches of snow, okay? Here's a town that always bought the same, they bought a 32 inch high plow, 10 foot, because they got little tiny streets and they really can't get the trucks in and, up, in and out of them. They're calling me in the middle of, of, you know, the third snowstorm of that season, asking me if I can put a wing on their truck. Why? Because their streets are slowly turning mm -hmm. into one lane. A wing is the only thing out there that can level piles. You know, it, a, a plow can only throw it so far. It can, it can lay your, your uh, berms back at an angle, but once the snow gets too high, there's no way to throw it and it starts to come back on the street. Now, if you've got a wing, you go down the road, you can take that pile and cut it right in half. Mm -hmm. And then you can continue to build your, your berms back up. So it's a factor of, of you know, really. And, and the other thing with a wing is you can, you can literally do, you know, uh, if, if it takes two passes to do a street with a wing, it probably is going to take you one pass. You know, you can, if your streets are oriented for it and they're wide enough and your shoulders are, soft, you know, open up enough, I mean, a wing can turn your plow time into next to nothing because you're, you're, you're doing that much father of a swap, mm -hmm. you know, every time you go up and down the street. No, I understand. Chuck had mentioned that too, right. as far as labor costs and so on and so forth. Uh, Kevin, quick question. If, if that's the case, then how will that be reflected in your budget? Will we be seeing a decrease at some point in time in your budget going down the road if a new truck was purchased with a wing plow? It's Should we possible, see a recent, but again, re reduction can, someplace? Can it, well, can you predict what I'm going to do for snow for the next? No, no, no. I, but I, that, that's I, part of my problem. I can't is, predict is because, but. I mean, the, the the purchase, the the replacement of this truck is the replacement of this truck for what it normally does. Mm -hmm. Now the wing is going to be the savior for the winter time only. I mean, yeah. obviously, I'm not going to use the wing in the right. summer. Right. No, no, I understand. So, and right. again, going back to what Chuck originally right. said, you know, so we're we're going back and forth. All right, so, so Chuck's route is River Road, okay? So yeah. if he goes down once with a wing, he goes down once, he comes back, and he's done. Now he goes down and back and down and back with two trucks. Mm -hmm. So, and again, now, and again, uh, yeah, I would be able to have my savings and not having to do uh, um, pay for somebody to come in and wing back my banks for me. 
Kevin, can I ask a question? Because I gotta run to another meeting. Sure. How much is the additional for a wing plow? What's 16, the total? So you have to, have to upgrade 18, the truck. Sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars. Worth every penny. From a public safety perspective, pushing those banks back, whether it be for water drainage, line of sight, additional plowing, streets, with me being out there running today and encroaching in the ice on the roadway, it's worth every penny. If that truck lasts you 15 years, as a resident, I would not vote for it without a wing plow. I tried to convince Sean to get one or two of the new trucks four years ago with wing plows, and he fought me tooth and nail on it. Really? Absolutely. I'm surprised. I would not support this truck on town meeting without a wing plow from a public safety perspective. I gotta run to another meeting. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Chuck. So, uh, with, with the wing plow said, as far as the expense of the truck, mm -hmm. I would be looking to spec this truck just like the two that we spec without it, because that would be able to handle it, correct? Correct. I mean, that, that is why that truck is spec that way, because we knew. Like Jay's truck has a, um, they call it the Express. It's got the dual butterfly instead of one way, because he's got one one way road that he would have to plow one way. And now he pushes it both ways. But the problem without that double expressway is yeah. he wasn't throwing his piles back. So then we'd have to go up there the next day and move it with the loader. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that road? Because there's no place to put snow there. Now with the wing, you're able to do it. And not only able to do it, you're able to do it effectively and safely. <clears throat> so it's not like, oh, well, now the truck's gonna cost more money because we've already been down the road of what really isn't holding up for what we need. So we built a truck that will hold up for what we need and that truck is acceptable to hold the wing. So it's not like we're looking to buy a big four wheel drive 10 wheeler and it's gonna cost the town 30,000 on the truck end. The truck's still gonna be what the truck is with or without the wing. Right, yeah, no, I, I understand okay. that. I, I just, just wanted, didn't know when you're asking, know, you know, well, no, how no, much I, more I, is it to right. add the wing? Well. Adding the wing to the truck, the truck's going to be the same whether you say or somebody says yay or nay for the wing. We would build the same truck just because of what we're hanging on the front. I don't think, in fact, our last meeting, Chuck, uh, obviously you weren't here, but I think in general everybody was kind of under the understanding and in somewhat agreement that a wing kind of made sense. So okay. that's, I, we're not arguing that. I just wanted to learn more about it. And that's why I'm asking questions. And I'm sure when towns people, you know, hits the floor and they're looking at two hundred and five thousand dollars for a truck, they'll want some answers too. You know, they're yeah. gonna be curious. So maybe this will help. And that's why I'm asking several yeah. questions. Sunderland hopefully, just did it. Hopefully they make sense, you know. Yep, Sunderland so. just did it and he said he absolutely loves it. it yeah. It's helped their town out tremendous. Uh, Jeff, what's the ability of the highway department to post clean trucks? Um, from salt, snow, they have the, uh, the ability to... Uh, that would be a question for Kevin. I'm sorry, well, could you feel that? Washing our trucks? Snow. Washing our yeah. trucks? Yes. Um, we wash our trucks as best as we can. Um, unfortunately, because when the highway garage was built, um, we didn't get our wash bag. Um, so we do wash inside. We are careful about washing inside because we don't want to destroy the inside of the building. Um, when we do go outside and when it's warm enough so that we don't have to worry about freeze up, you know, with, yeah. literally for the guys washing the trucks down, um, they'll wash outside and then they, then we bring them back in. So is there, does that deteriorate the existing trucks to a point where you need a, a wash bay which would save us money or? Oh, wash bay is definitely key. I mean, you know, you think about it, if you got, you put, you put rust on this or you, excuse me, you put salt on this and you don't clean it, it's gonna rot. Yeah. If you clean it, it's gonna last a lot longer. So, and that's why we try to do the best we can with what we have. But do it, you can't go outside and wash your truck. No. You have salt issues, and you have containment inside. Correct, well, our containment, our actual our containment actually ties into the outside one, which goes into the oil water separator yeah. before it goes into the sewer system. But it's still soft. That's correct. Uh, correct. So you really have no, meth no way of cleaning your truck. It's not true. They do. Um, wash the trucks outside. Do it all? Yeah. Spread it all over. Not. It's got to be warm, though. I mean, we can't well, go out there. When I, I think. I think the point he's trying to get at is, is, is we're not concentration. concentration of salt. 
which actually inadvertently is good for our wastewater treatment plant because that is pretty much what took all of that brown stuff and killed it because we are getting a large amount of FOG on, oh God, God, I can't remember what F is, anyway, oils, oils and greases, uh, fats, oils and greases. And that's what caused that, for the ones that have seen that photo, where the aerator tank is filling with brown stuff and we're still trying to figure out what that is. It hasn't come back from the lab yet to find out exactly what it was. But again, because that was one of the questions I asked Keith right off the bat was, hey, just out of curiosity, I said, is, is my salt doing anything to you? And he said, nope, he's doing anything. He said, you're actually helping me. So. We're just saying, with the, we store the trucks inside. Mm -hmm. um, it might be nice to look at eventually adding a standalone wash bag. Duh, that'd be fantastic. I'm just thinking that should be looked at to. Hands down. Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, because again, because if, when we wash inside, you know, you got to be careful because you, you think about, well, you're inside a big building. Well, there is splash. You are getting some of the stuff into the other areas. On um, Lexington, we went down to Lexington. Brand new, rotten. Yeah. Structurally. Yeah. Beams so, that hold the building up. Understood. It wasn't even five years old. They started washing in the corner. Yeah. Told not to. And that's why our industry has gone so much to stainless steel because uh, you know yeah. you know all the all the metals in the paint is is gone. So I mean you could spray paint on steel all day long. You know today it's hard ox. You know hard ox steel. It's high tensile steel. It's it's stainless. You know it, it, you just don't get the the you know anything you build today. You just don't get the time frames that you used to get out of out of things. Kim. Uh, my name is Kip Camos, I'm a selectman here in Deerfield. And uh, um, my job, I feel, is to look out for all the town of Deerfield, everyone in this room except for you two fellows. Um, and I, I just question this from a lot of different uh, points of view. Um, I, don't, I don't agree that used trucks are a big problem. I mean, are you the dealer and you're the accessory guy? Yes, correct. I mean, I've bought used trucks. My son has recently bought four trucks. All the trucks he bought had over 100,000 miles. He puts 150,000 miles a year on those. And he's never had a problem with any of them. Just not have oil and tires. Yeah. That's no one more. So, Something. you know, that's why I don't think that used trucks are all that much of a problem. Uh, can I, myself, can I just answer that to you a second? Sure. Yeah, the problem, you know, you, 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 the biggest problem that you miss is, is that Idle time. These guys idle a lot. I mean, the trucks are, are it's just design of the of the of the industry. I, I, I get it. An but over the road they, truck they today they, doesn't doesn't you know, they'll run a lot lot more. If you're running on the highway, you're going to get a lot more miles than you will out of something that's. that's I, I get it, and, and that's my point. I mean, what, what my son does, and what I used to do with my trucks is, you know, they're running 18 hours six days a week. Mm -hmm. The only time they're shut off, they're getting maintenance. Uh, so I don't necessarily buy the fact that just because it's a used truck that it's a bad thing. I mean, if you're, you wouldn't agree that a truck that's six years old is necessarily junk. It depends on the condition of the truck. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. The, so, the towns that the, you see, the six-year-old and the five-year-old trucks, generally come out of Vermont, mm -hmm. if not all of them. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a, another dealership in Vermont. Um, the towns up there rotate their trucks out on a five to seven year plan, but they intentionally um, build them cheap because they know that they're not going to spend money on maintenance, never mind in the first five to seven years, but at all beyond that. So stainless steel and things that John's talking about where the truck is going to last are non-existent in those trucks. So yeah, the other thing you got to remember, remember that is, I mean, I came from a background of being a, a, a PM mechanic. I took care of a large fleet in Boston at, at one time, and I've also worked for United Truck Leasing for years. And you know, any time you buy a used truck, it's it's a toss of a coin. You don't know what's going on internally. Uh, but lease companies have have really uh, got it to a science as to what they do, and you know, like. What, uh, what they were talking about for as far as cost per mile. You take any, any of the big lease companies like Hertz, uh, Ryder, 
Uh, they'll run a truck for five, six years. They watch that cost per mile right down to the penny. And then as soon as that starts to escalate, they'll dump that truck because they know that at that point in time, they, it, you know, it's a flip of the coin. They may not, but they, they know that there may be a point where they're going to have a catastrophic event or they're going to have something go wrong with the truck that's going to cost them large sums of money. And their attitude is they want to spend it on the grease and the oil, keep the preventive maintenance down, keep the cost down. And that way, the overall cost of the truck levels itself out over the years. They'll always have new trucks rotating in and out of the fleet. That's true, but there's no way of guaranteeing that the new truck's not going to be problematic, too. There's, there is absolutely you, no you way. You can buy brand new Ford and have them in with injector problems, piston and cam problems, valve train problems, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, no question about it. I mean, my son did buy a new Ford and it spent 11 months in the garage, had no use of it, and it ended up costing Ford. They ended up having to take the cab right off of the truck to get the motor to work. These things do happen. But, most but I will tell you though, if, if you look at, you know, you look at, like, like Jay said earlier, if you look at what's available in the year for trucks, I mean, if you really want to go back to 07 and, 0, and 06, those are really the only uh, trucks that, you know, people are actually, you know, say are reliable because they were, they were tier one engines. Now you've got tier two, tier three, and, and they were nightmares. So you've got that big gap in between there, and then you look at the pictures of the rust they had up there. I mean, I see it all day long, and we fight it all day long. It's an industry that, you know, we see it. You know, we, we try, I've, I've done undercoating from one end of a truck to another to try to prevent it for certain towns. Is there any guarantees with it? Absolutely not. You don't know. Maintenance is a big part of that. So if you see a truck that has no rust on it, it's pretty rare that they're out there. And somebody took good care of that vehicle. But you're taking a risk as to what the background of that truck is. How many times it was in for bad turbocharges, bad regen systems, you know, bad sensors, electrical issues. The town of, uh, I can think of two towns, town of Newbury and the town of uh, Brimfield, both bought trucks back in, I believe it was in either 2008 or 2009. They had bought a, script, a particular model of engine from International. And literally, though they turned those trucks in, they didn't care what they got for them, they just wanted to trade them in after five years. They could never get through an entire window without two or three major breakdowns with those trucks. That's true. But most, most trucks are heavy duty. If you take care of them, whoever owns them takes care of them, they run and they run and they run. I know you didn't. Well, if you go down to the highway garage, I'm sorry, to the fire station, I know you've been there, but all of us have been there, you'll see a fleet of eight to nine trucks over there. There isn't one truck that is you know, from 2000 new. They're all old. They're old Max, they're old Peterbilt, they're old Kenworths. Uh, there's even a, an older international six-wheel truck. How do these things keep running? Well, because the they're garage. Industry, the industry. Uh, they're garage most of their lives. No, they're not in the garage. They're still behind the barn. But they're not well, being used. They plow snow for the state yeah. all the time. So they fire fire. Well, they, they're parked behind the fire department. Oh, oh. So, so it's got nothing to do with the fire department. There's no other fire department. There's snow plows that line up. Contractors. Like Patterson's and all that. Because <laughs> right. well, they're making money so they can turn around and dump it back in them for a short term effect. The problem, what I'm saying is that they got used to trucks running around the fire department. Well, they were used to them running around the fire department. Well, what I'm saying is that they got used trucks and they're using them all the time. And if they weren't making money on them, they wouldn't use them. I said this before. The town of Conway got rid of an F8000 because it had bad rear ends. A local contractor bought it for $5,000 because it was junk and all rusted. It's been plowing on the state for over 18 years, made the guy half a million dollars. That's my point. You know, here in the town, it's nice if money is not an object, but it's huge. I'm supposed to be at another meeting at 6 o'clock in the morning where they want to spend $800,000 to repair the car, $300,000 for, for paving the parking lot, $70,000 for new bleachers, $45,000 for new furniture for the office, $18,000 for car And it's all really important. It's important for our children, and it's public safety, and all the same old things. But the problem is, people, that we have to get a handle on what we're spending here. And if we don't, and we let all these things happen, you know what our taxes are going to be? If, if I didn't create the same type of question that I'm question tonight. Every single one in this room would have paid an extra $250 in the property taxes. For our, because of the school roof. 
and we have an assessor here, and you ask him what an extra thousand million dollars on our budget will do. Most of the towns I deal with, as far as what I've been told, uh, when trucks are put on a capital improvement plan, there's no raising of any taxes because it's all accounted for. Mm -hmm. But that's not just the forward. chart. It's what I'm saying to the people in this room is it's everything. It's not, I, you know, Kevin and I get along with it. I think him and his crew do a good job. That's not the problem. The problem is to spend this kind of money on a truck, you know, and there, money is a real issue in this community. And it's, it's not, it, it might sound at this moment that I'm against the highway, but that's not it at all. You know, I say the same thing to the police, you know, we have, you know, um, the EMS thing. I mean, if I didn't cause, as Carolyn, if I didn't cause the same thing, our EMS building might be in Waitley right now. You know, because at the time, us three selected, we didn't want to rock the boat. We didn't want to destroy our EMS system. So it was almost, I think, it was going to end up in Waitley. Possibly no, no, system. Kip, wait. Wait, 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 Carolyn. No way was I going to support a temporary move to to wait. Yes. You know what, Jonathan? They wanted to charge six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It was a fair? temporary. It was a temporary move. And let's please not reiterate. Oh, Don't bring it in. I'm going to have to reel yeah, reel yeah, back yeah, in yeah, here, back right? In right because we got to come back to to this. But I have uh, a question on the truck, real quick. Sorry. Yeah, um, please. Um, is there an related. option to lease vehicles like this, or is it not even? Do, do any towns lease vehicles? Sunderland's actually leasing their truck. They are? No. Okay. They're going to lease it with a zero buyout. So before, one of the things that I was going to try and explain before is that the town could actually lease the truck over a set amount of time if you don't want to pay for it all up front and see if you can get your, get your money for it. And if you're not, then you just give it back to them. I mean, what, what are the what are the lengths of the lease? Well, generally, municipal leases are not turning leases. Okay. They are. I, I think. You know, they're the, they're lease in, in terminology only. A lease is, is a benefit to a private company that pays taxes. Okay. So, um, sorry. The, the, what we do with towns um, up in Vermont is called a lease, but what it is is a guaranteed buyback after five or seven years. So we'll. Tell the town, we will give you at a minimum X amount of dollars for that vehicle after this amount of time. Being built out by the requested specs. Yeah, when it, such as. But the only the I guess not the only but the benefit of that for them is that they keep that rotation going. So at year four, they're planning to replace that truck year five. Mm -hmm. So they have payment for all the years. Correct. So the, town, the town's not going out of business, so they're constantly looking forward. But, but your normal municipal lease is just a time. Uh, you could make an annual payment, biannual, and then after the term, the truck is still yours. You could do what you want with it. And the idea of that is the town, if it keeps the money in the budget, they can turn around and lease another vehicle and, and just keep replacing them after a certain amount of time. Skip? As a general rule of thumb, What's what's the life expectancy in, in years of the kind of trucks we're talking about? The five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty. I realize if you're putting fifty thousand miles a year in a truck, it's different from when you're putting ten thousand miles a year. But just as a general rule. Well, just just to answer him. I mean, as far as is, you know, you you can look at two vehicles, uh, two trucks. One with a hundred thousand miles. One with five hundred thousand miles. And if, if you have good preventive maintenance on the truck with 500,000 miles, in some cases that truck could be worth more than the truck with 100,000 miles. You know, it's all in what you put into them. So I mean, a 500,000 mile truck or a 200,000 mile truck, that's not a major detriment right. to the but value. The, of the but the key is with, with this industry, because of, the, because of the salt, because of the corrosion, I, I can tell you, just, just listening to, you know, to these guys, is that, you know, the more, the older your fleet gets, the higher your cost of miles go. There's, there's no, no two ways around that. And, but it's a double-edged sword because not only do you have more big repairs, but you also end up with less maintenance because, you know, his time is, is set. He's got so many hours to work for the town, mm -hmm. okay? Now, he can be taking that time greasing, maintaining, and, and adjusting, and doing the things that that truck needs to stay 
you know, efficient to its time frame. Or he could be changing a set of injectors on a 15-year-old truck and then not greasing the body that needs to be greased. And then you're going to have a problem there and you have a problem over there. And that's really what you get into. And that's, you know, there's, there's been studies done by large corporations how to reduce cost per mile on vehicles and what to do. You know, the old adage is oil and grease. That's all you want to do. But I can tell you as a mechanic, you can take a vehicle, you can take a truck, and if you get a driver who preloads that drive shaft every time he shifts, you could have catastrophic event after 5,000 miles. I mean, if you've got a driver that knows what he's doing, you might not touch that truck for 200,000 miles. So you know, that's the difference. When you put the car in drive, the car really isn't working all that hard to push you down the street, but a truck is working its, you know, its jabronis off every day of the week. And, and that's the difference. The, the type of vehicles that we're talking about buying here and use, use as a plow vehicle in large measure, should we expect the vehicle to last for 20 years? I or think should we not expect it to last for 20 years? I would say the average I see in, in Mass, Western Massachusetts, the four counties, uh, the majority of the towns start the process to replace the truck at 10 years in hopes to get it through town meeting at 12 to 15 years. The people that I that I spoke with, and I spoke with several, uh, and and they're also involved with different towns here. Uh, they basically base it on a 20-year purchase is what they're looking. Whether it'll last 20 years or not, give or take a year or two, is pretty much the consensus that I received from the other people that I spoke with well, from different towns. John, but I'll it, jump uh, to you. Sure, asking, asking as a taxpayer, um, the guarantee buyback when they buy the replacement truck does it have to be through you in order to get the guarantee buyback? Yes. So you're kind of locking us, locking us in. Well, that's that. you, you're going to guarantee to buy back the truck even if we don't buy another one, right? At least the, the, the ones that we have done, the guaranteed buyback in the language is. Contingent on purchasing another okay. truck at year five yeah, or whatever the term is. Out of curiosity, what's the buyback as a percentage of the original cost of the vehicle? Approximately 25%. So, say if you don't, after if five we, get, if we get ticked off of you, we don't want to deal with you, then we can take the 25%. That's what we would do. Oh, or you can go to another so, dealer, and that 25% would probably hold pretty true as a trading value, but it's a guarantee yeah. um, based on the, you know, the spec of the vehicle. So, so generally speaking, that's going to approximate the trading value, the uh, guarantee by, by that? Yeah. Yes, correct. Generally? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have another question. Um, as a taxpayer, have we shopped for another brand of truck, and have we shopped for another dealer? Or are we just saying, here's the one, buy it? Well, um, we haven't bought a truck from Patriot, so he's kind of neutral in this matter. Um, but generally, I've done research in the past and, well, not shop for different trucks for other reasons. We currently hold a fleet of Freightliner trucks. I currently have special tools, I have my software, and I have awesome dealer support, whether it's from him, Tri-State, it don't matter, wherever you are. I mean, I'm hooked up through uh, the Mayor Chrysler on the web. That gives me free software to plug into these trucks for any body control issues. I get wiring diagrams. And quite frankly, if I have a problem, I'll talk to a technician. That makes sense. Okay. Um, a, lot of these, a lot of these highway garages around here went out and bought the Internationals, their last round of purchases. Because International was, and correct me if I'm wrong, the last one to get on board with the Innocent program. They waited full pill. Caterpillar? They said, screw it, we're not building on our motor no more. I don't want to deal with your emissions. Cummins, they started, what, probably four years before the regulated mandate was out there. They started. They certified a year in advance. Right. Before EPA 14. Their stuff ahead of time, which gave them a whole year to work out their bugs. So I currently, I currently have Freightliner software, I have Cummins software, and I have Allison software. That makes sense. And so I'm all equipped. Right. And, and the thing about Cummins is, I just had the guy there the other day, because I um, had some check engine lights. The guy from Cummins, he comes right to you. 
He says, if you can't fix it there, call me because I'll do it, whatever I can to make sure you can get up and running as quick as possible. So you got the support. I mean, okay. if you want to jump over to international or no, no, you can answer. You know, okay. no, 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 I can back. I can back what Chuck was just saying. No, that That's the same sense. thing I heard. I mean, Chuck, all my so. filters, my spray right. pin bushings, all my wearing plus parts components. are available, it's, readily I got, available. I have one of everything so. on the shelf. Right. Got a trucks. couple of people, Jack has, and then <clears throat> Trevor. Wait a minute, I got one more though. Oh, what okay, Chuck. All right. So the so other thing dealers, has to go out the bid. Oh, right. has to go out the bid. No. Has to go out the bid. So the other Unless. dealers. Hold on, okay. Just because I did. Yeah. Oh. So, so the other dealers, um, you can either go out the bid, which any of them will bid, and you write a bid spec, or after the research I've done, it's actually worked in our favor a little better by going off contract because you got a BEH contract through the state, you got Greater Boston Police Council. And there's one more out there, isn't there? Or is that the two? Smith County, something like that. Smith County. County. Yep. So this is like it's through the state? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, okay. So, so we can't go shopping. It's a you're not, what, I, what I was going to say is my when experience. I go to buy, when I go to buy a car, I go to, right. I go to Lee or and I go to mm -hmm. other people. Huh? You can do that. When, when you, as a town, go shopping for the same brand vehicle, it's, it's a, a handshake between dealerships that we don't sell the municipalities outside of our area of responsibility. So you can, but... It's not price fixing, Kip. You, you're gonna stop the, that, seriously. The state vetted all I mean, the that, that's the, No, no, the no. comment like that. The comment like that, the comment from the last meeting, oh, the, the, the wing plow only takes one, one, one lever. I mean, you, you need, the, the comments have to stop, Kip, because people are listening to this, and now exactly. people are starting to think oh, that goodness, we're getting ripped ready. off. If you want to go there, how much did you pay for that F550 lot last year, the 2017? Kip, Kip, well, this is we need to stay, I know, but we're all here. I bought the exact same truck for $40,000 less, so I don't want to hear Kip, it. I'm a Kip, Kip, but that was diesel, Carol, ver Carol, Carol. diesel versus gas. Diesel versus truck, gas. Oh, diesel versus gas. Right. Other I things, I know, but Kip, it's not the same. Now, please, we're staying focused in here. here. I do. Sander, plow. Plow is eight grand. The this, this Sander's, it. what, 12? Or it's, it's, it's not the same is, stuff. I know, but we're wasting, we're, we need to stay yeah. focused here, please. Okay. This is, this I, is yeah. our meeting. John, are you set? I don't know. Or do you have <laughs> additional <laughs> questions? <laughs> because we have Jack and then Trevor. Two and a half hours from here. And honestly, whether you guys buy used or new, I don't care what I put a, equipment on. You know, oh, it's no, the I'm same. Saying, yeah. to, actually, we, we, you know, it's, it's labor to us. So, you know, it, it, and I just came here to help Chuck. I mean, that's really that. what I'm here for. So, so, uh, so it's just to, to your comments, Skip, about how long the truck would last, I don't know if you came in a little bit after the meeting I had already started. Well, one of the things that we were kind of discovering was was that, yeah, the truck will last. A truck like this will last 20 years, but it's worth nothing at the end. Oh, I don't care what's and, worth at the end. I want to make sure that it stands up and is useful for okay, 20 years. Okay, but that's what I got for the answer. It w yeah, it will last 20 years. However, if... The, the, the question was asked, would it make more sense to be on a 15-year replacement because the truck that's 15 years old might be worth $40,000 rather than $2,500. And also, the other thing that Chuck was demonstrating was that the maintenance costs accelerate as the truck gets older. So you have like a double whammy. The truck, as it gets older, starts to depreciate that the value starts to drop like a stone, basically because it's so rotted out that no one wants it. I, I, so, you're in the business of, of selling cars. Mm -hmm. So how old a car are you willing to sell at your facility? We don't sell cars older than uh, like seven years old. Because? Because, they, because old cars break more. And, and I, I give, yeah, I mean, and, and I give a year warranty, and if I start selling cars that are older than seven years old, and I don't care if they have low mileage, they may have low mileage, it Absolutely. doesn't matter. Absolutely. Because I keep track of my warranty costs, and, and an old car with low mileage will be less reliable than a new car with high mileage. 
So I, I, I understand it. So this is I just to answer the question. I was talking yeah. About. And it isn't 20 years if you want my two cents for it. We, we should be looking probably for something, getting rid of the, trading these vehicles in or changing in something less than 20 years. Right. right. That, but that the but on the other know. hand, on the other hand, one of the advantages that we have is we have Chuck, and Chuck takes care of our equipment really, really well. So we might be able to squeeze another year or two out. I can see well, maybe, where the decision might be become well, that's where a 15 gotta, year gotta, cycle. Right. Look at but and I, and that's I kinda, where you're, and that's why that's you're where your data is going to tell right. us. He's right. That. I, I I think I would right. like what I'd like with something that's you don't have history on. Right. Right. And and this is the, yeah. Okay. But, but so. I'd like you to be the one to tell us. Do we switch to a 15-year cycle or a 20-year? You know, will we stick with the 20? Because you are our advantage to on the, on these vehicles, and and so I don't know. But this is an interesting discussion because this will impact our mm -hmm. capital Trevor. plan. Do we buy life insurance on Chuck? Yeah, I, 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 I'm actually really impressed, Chuck. I knew you were doing a lot, but I, I didn't realize that it was so, so much and, and to, to our advantage, just so much. And I just want you to know I appreciate it. And I'm sure that's what Trevor was going to say. So I was just, the, the um, spreadsheet you had up there with the different dollars amount, different years, the mm -hmm. numbers under that, are those equipment? That, that's a right. serial number for our equipment. Yeah, they're, they're all numbered. Yeah. Well, what happened when me and him worked together to put together the plan is it only went 23 years because we only stretched out to our last replacement of the equipment. Yeah. So basically, I was trying to give the capital improvement a plan on everything that at the time we owned, yeah. when it should be replaced, that day's replacement value when it was put together yeah. to give you guys an outlook to say, well, Okay, we're gonna have two trucks coming up this year. Can we? Should we do one before or one after? Right. So you don't have that. It's just showing our All piled right. And it, there's a lot more that went to it before we changed the sheets. I actually had the capital request forms. I have them over there that are still filled out on the old sheet, with explaining my recommendations as to what to replace them with in the current condition of all the equipment. So, a lot more so the information is all there all that done, goes right. with it. Right. But I was just trying to give you a background streamline of what we put together to say, hey, you guys are gonna ask me to spend all this time to put this together, right, follow it. and we're gonna backpedal, then right. like everybody cool. mentioned, you know, you can. And the only thing I'd like to add on to that is just keep in the back of your mind when you look at the bottom of that spreadsheet when it comes to the dollar amounts, those dollar amounts were 2014. Okay. So, 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 so there's, there, there is no escalator that's been put into those numbers. Compound. Yeah. And, um. Well, well, for for me, I, I don't know how we can navigate buying a used truck. I don't, I, from I what don't, I'm hearing, I don't know how we can. I don't know I'm how we either. can navigate it. I don't know how we can find one. We can agree on one. How we can how we can navigate the bidding process. The you know, I mean, if you're going to buy a a car for the health department, then yeah, we could do that. But it, uh, to me, this is just too, too complicated to. Well, if you don't understand the concepts of startability, gearability, section moduluses, right. RBM factors, I mean, you know, GVWs, and you know, right. I can tell you this: you can, you, you know, we mentioned how how long a truck will last. But truck is poorly spec from day one. You get a bad salesman, he poorly specs a truck, and and the truck is meant to do a job on a daily basis. The first thing you're going to see is huge, huge maintenance costs because that vehicle is just struggling to do what it's doing. You know, as opposed to something that's built correctly for the job, won't struggle half as bad. So think about it. You know, when you say a truck is climbing a hill and it's trying to pull a load, it, 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 you see it all. The, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it when you're on a highway and the truck's going up a you know 10, 12 percent grade. You see some trucks are barely creeping up the hill. Other guys are just flying over the top of the hill. Now you think about that, which truck is going to last longer? Which one is straining to get up there, which one isn't? And it all comes back to the, to the backbone of the truck. I mean, it all, all that wear and tear basically comes down to dollars, you know, you know, what you're paying on a monthly basis to keep that truck on the street. Okay, 
Anyway, it's I just high, don't, I don't a, know how we're going to navigate. High, I don't know how we're going to find wall. the used one that's yeah. that's spec the way it should be. And right. so, John, did you have another comment or question? No, never mind. All right. Chuck, you had a <clears throat> comment or question? Um, just to compare our 07 to the last 14, that's why when we got and we did this, mm -hmm. we went with the pros and the cons. And that's why you see like the, the 14s we built, they're not a lot bigger, but they're bigger. You know, we went, just to run down, we built a truck with a 44,000 GVW instead of a 36. So when you're asking how long a truck will last, like if these trucks continue not to give us problems and they're equipped with stainless bodies, virtually you, you shouldn't, in a, in a good maintenance program, you shouldn't have any real major issues going your 20 years. Mm -hmm. Would it be nice to see something in the end and maybe shorten it up? You know, maybe, maybe another five years from now we'll see how they hold up. But that is one reason why we built the bigger truck. Because we talked to bodybuilders. We went and visited <coughs> Westminster DPW. Uh, Patriot brought us up there and we wound up not even buying trucks from them. You know, they brought me to Westminster. You go up to Westminster DPW, it, it looks like a Tonka yard. They got everything from a small six-wheeler to 10-wheelers. I mean, they know their stuff. So I just want to say that when you look at my spec sheets and you see we that 07 that's starting to creep up there, well, it's underpowered. That's probably why the injectors are starting to, you know, everything's taking a toll on it. And long of the story is, like he said, is if you build the right truck, you're, you should be able to get the life out of it. John. You know, we... <coughs> People back here, I think, or for me, I don't know what you're asking for and what you're replacing. That was never brought out, I don't think. Oh, it wasn't the original, sorry. Yeah. Huh? We can recast. It was another meeting, right? Oh, yeah, yeah we've had a couple of yeah. meetings. Yes, we've had a couple yeah, of meetings. Because it's well, it's a continuation. Yeah, so I don't know what. Yeah. So, did you see the pictures of the truck? Yeah. Okay. It's a 1999 Freightliner FL70 with an all-season body. Okay. Um, it's a frontline truck. It's got an 11-foot plow on the front. It's got a side discharge on there. It's a, it's a frontline sanding and plowing truck for every snowstorm. In the summertime, its job, it's, it's a unique truck because of its job, it has a side chute. So, like, as you see the road shoulders get beat up or we're repaving, well, instead of calling somebody like Warner Brothers or something to come fill our shoulders in, we're able to go get millions or whatever we want to use, put it in the truck, and it actually conveyors along the side of the road so you can do it in a quick manner. Mm -hmm. So we're just looking to replace that truck because it's due to be replaced, but at the same time, now is the time to build the truck with a wing. I understand. So it's a 1999. So it's a 1999 we're replacing with a 2018, 2019 uh, Freightliner. So the, the, way, like the way it's spec right now is a... 114 SD or that's equivalent. almost give or take a year in 19. Yeah, I mean, because hypothetically, if we said right now we want the truck, here's the money, we won't see the truck for what a year. Almost, yeah, I was gonna say, and usually truck manufacturers, the title years are at least a year ahead. I mean, 018s are already hitting the street, so, so right. the I mean, truck could be two years old. I don't know what year. when you put it in service, but it could yeah. be two years old. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. Yep. thank you, Chuck. So, question for Jay, yeah. A dump truck that hauls material. A municipal truck with a big plow, always overweight to capacity, and always in the salt. 50,000 miles. Would it be wrong to say that that's almost double mileage from the wear and tear, at least at a minimum? Quadruple. Okay. For, for a plow truck. Right. So, like, let's just say you got a contractor that buys a used truck with 100,000 miles on it, that all it's done was haul material, and it might have done that in one year's time. And, and you go look at a truck that may be six, seven years old with 35,000 miles on there that the town's already had that's been under spec, probably beat to the board because it was under spec. There's no comparison mileage wise. No. The, the, the black book is the used truck pricing book that uh, essentially the industry uses. A on-highway truck is what the industry standard is based on. 
on highway, meaning line haul, 80,000 pounds or less uh, on highway. The vocational market, kind of like you mentioned your son does with a dump truck, you can double that mileage based on the, the work the truck does. A vocational or a, a, an extreme severe duty truck, a mining truck, quadruple the mileage, that's what the mileage would be looked at if, if we were going to take that truck in on trade. So if it's got 50,000 miles, regardless of what the odometer says, we're considering it to have 200,000 miles. You have to take in all the wear and tear and the idle time that that truck has. It might not have miles, but they're on the side of the road working all summer long. The truck's running all year long. So hopefully that answers your question. Can I just ask, a truck with 200,000 miles, that's not unreasonable to expect the truck to last too much. Or the equivalent of 200,000. The engine and transmission. Well, I can tell you this, before emissions kicked in, the <coughs> industry was ready to warranty over-the-road truck engines for a million miles. Yeah, wow. uh, that's what emissions has done to the, and now you're lucky, you know, they've gone back to what, 500,000 miles? And that's only in the conditional warranties. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, the industry standard is all based on on-highway trucks, right. meaning aerodynamic only go down the highway. The Detroit engines are guaranteed a B10 life of 500,000 miles, and that means, in short, after 500,000 miles, 10% of those engines will need a complete overhaul. So they're guaranteeing 90% of them trucks to make it 500,000 miles over five years and into their second life, second owner, where that expense is no longer on the first owner, the purchaser of the vehicle, and where those maintenance costs start to climb is, is the second life. The, the, uh, the whole industry is driven by that first purchaser. And these vocational trucks, dump trucks, plow trucks, None of that is a consideration. So it's, it, the, the deck is already stacked against these vocational markets. Right out of the gate. Does anybody have any more comments, questions, concerns? As I said, this is the first step of a process. Uh, Finance committee will be looking at this, obviously. Select board will be looking at it. And uh, eventually the town floor. So. Uh, does anybody have any additional comments? If not, is there uh... I do. And it seems to me, I don't know if we all agree, but they obviously need a truck. The 1999s, it's history. So I think the decision should be whether the town should pay for the extras, for the wing, for the more powerful truck. I think that's a decision that needs to be made. How much extra we pay, other than the model we have now? Right. That's just my thought. I just right. Put it on the table. Right. My my thought would be on on that, and I, I hear what you're saying, but I my That's thought would be that those would be probably questions the finance committee would want to when we start going down through and actually ask for a, maybe ask for an invoice and a price sheet as far as the build outs and that. I don't know. So, you guys. yeah. Well, we have we have asked. We I have asked about the uh, because I know you know the reps here are here for tonight, and so we did a, get a, a ballpark figure for a chassis, and then explain some of the build outs and what we're looking at. So, as far as that. So, are you looking for a motion? Or should we, uh, because this is so much money, should we have our full committee? Our full committee involved, because yeah. we do have two members missing. Right. I'm going to leave that up to, to you, you as a committee. I don't think I should be making that decision. And I want to be fair about this, because if I had to vote tonight, I know how I'd vote. And this is, I really appreciate your information now, because I sit on the finance committee and I'm going to be here again dealing with this, I would probably abstain tonight on my vote 
only because I don't want to vote yes or no on it tonight because I may have additional questions on the Finance Committee. And I don't think it would be fair to vote one way or the other and then do a 180 after I sat on the Finance Committee and voted differently. I don't think that would be appropriate. Well, so, I, I don't think we're under any pressure to vote to vote tonight. That's, we, no. we can and we, we can put a whole lot. I feel like people feel I feel like we have time to, to think about it, and we should have the full committee to when we do vote, right? And if we could get you know lease figures, I'd be interested in looking at those as well. Sure. And maybe uh, I'm assuming I would be as a member of finance committee. I'd I'd like to see if possible, an itemized build out, uh, you know, spec sheet mm -hmm. and cost if, if that. No, certainly. With the, it's, with it's, the chassis. It's, everything's transparent right. here. It's, but I don't want to. There's no smoke know. and mirrors. There's no. Right. And I'm just one this. person, so I don't want to. Well, I, I think you guys made a, made a great. A lease arrangement, too, and the pricing on the lease. And I assume you've got more than one option on the lease, whether it's three years, five years. Out to 10 years is the most I've ever done for a municipality. Five is the most common, occasionally seven. I think I've done a 10 year once. So there are options based on what, the, what benefits the town the best. I, it would be interesting to look at the numbers, but so I have to say that, the, that I feel like we wouldn't want the lease though because we have Chuck. If we didn't have Chuck, that puts us in a so different situation. The lease is a purchase. Right. It's a financing arrangement as opposed, well, it's a financing arrangement as opposed to Yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe, maybe it wouldn't last 20 years, but I, I feel like this is still a 20-year purchase for us. It, 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 but you're never going to finance it over 20 years. We're talking about financing um, that's true. a lease program that's either five or seven or, or maybe slightly longer. There are a few yes. options here that I think are yeah, worthwhile well, looking could be. at. Right. And so Chuck, if we can walk away at the end of the lease. <clears throat> Chuck, you had a Why wouldn't we do comment for guaranteed value for well, um, I I was able to get some homework from George out of Sunderland what what they did and, mm. and their truck was two hundred thousand. Actually, it's two hundred eleven. Yeah, but there's a little different there. So they they leased two hundred thousand dollars over seven years, mm -hmm. and they pay $29,047 a month for their truck for the next seven years, and then they own it after that seven years. A year, not a month. Or I mean a year, so $29,000 a year, $29, <laughs> right. a year, a year. seven <laughs> years for yeah. a $200,000 truck yeah. okay. is what they did over seven years, and then at the seven years, it's your truck. Right. So then you could essentially run it, and then if it's going south, so you don't, you're not under. mandatory to turn it in? No. no. Oh, oh, no, oh okay. Because, no. see, I was thinking that we were no. having so to turn it in, and I was thinking, Chuck oh, because At the end of seven years, we, you basically own it. Correct. And you can make have. a decision as far as All right, then I'm, I'm okay with that. I thought we had to just turn it just in. Just because I've been involved in a number of them, what normally a town does, oops, sorry. what oh, normally no. a town does is they put off a bid for the, for the lease. And what the, what, what the lease companies do is they bid factors. So what you do is you get a factor based on the bid, and then whether you want to spend two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, you take that factor, and then it'll tell you what you pay. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was an automatic turn. No, but that's the end fine. Of it, you keep it. Yes. Yeah. Right. If Chuck has maintained it the whole time, then yeah, then I, it was to our advantage that's, to keep it. So okay. it just saves you from putting up the lump sum for the front. Yeah. Right. No, that's that's. Kevin, a quick question. One last question. Believe it or not, I think hopefully. <laughs> Uh, as far as the existing truck now, if that's on the way out the door with either a lease truck, a new truck, whatever the case may be, where's that truck going? Gone, off property, out of town? Oh, yeah. Disappears? Yeah, no, it's, when, it's not going to be when, parked up when, at the dump or no. something. I mean, shouldn't say dump the transfer station or whatever, no. trying to keep it for parts or anything? Nope. Okay. Down the road. All right. When is just quickly, when is the town considering purchasing a new truck? Or um, approving it possibly after July 1st? Uh, no, um, no, no, it's no. for town meeting town April. Meeting, April. Right. April. The purchase would be give or take approximately July 1st. Yeah. Well, it'll be April 30th 1st. decision, but it will be a July 1st it, availability of money. Just for, I guess, consideration, build times right now are in August. To it, start or to finish? To, just to start the okay. building of the, the chassis. 
Um, mm -hmm. the, the economy is so strong, so many, the order intake is, is double what is being produced on a daily basis. You can plan on running that truck next winter, that, that 99, if you decide to buy a new truck. So, I mean, that's something you have mm -hmm. to consider. But mm -hmm. that's, that's, we can do that anyway. Even if we purchased it today, by the time. It'd be, it would be very close for winter yeah. by the time it was up. What, what he's saying is if you wait too long, right. you might not yeah. have it next week. Right. Yes, yeah. no, understood. We don't, we don't have a choice. We can't get the town meeting yeah. before the end of April. Right. Once, yeah. once we get through town meeting, the purchase can be made, particularly if we're not going to take possession of it for a year. Yeah, if the, if the town who makes the decision how it's financed, whether it's leased for how long, whether we buy it. Out well, that's part part of all our decision is so to decide. Who makes the decision? Who says? Who, who, who puts who puts the numbers down on a piece of paper and says this is the best way to do it? Well, it, hopefully it would come out of the capital uh, the capital committee would recommend to the finance and the select board. And the treasurer is going to have an input in that. She's not here. We all, we're all this, supposed to control. Right, it's going to have to go yeah, through the whole process, John. Say, yes. Well, here's my quick question. The box got to stop somewhere. Have, have we leased anything in the past? Okay. We've always done a flat out purchase? Mm -hmm. okay. as, uh, far I, I I just, as far as I know, as far as I know, as far as I know. What did you say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? What did you say? Uh, have we leased anything? Have we, have we leased, have we gone out and leased a truck? Or have not, we always not, done flat not out to purchases? my knowledge. Not that I can I can't remember. Uh, no. I, like I said, it doesn't make a difference. I was just yeah, curious. A, a lease, a lease is, is a purchase. It's another way of purchasing a vehicle. Correct. But there's an interest rate built into a lease. Correct. And we need to compare that. We need to compare that interest rate to our borrowing interest rate, which we can. That's not. Yeah. That's and I think that's something that's going to need to be discussed, as Skip is pointing out. Finance Committee, and, the Treasurer. And, and and we've already committed to do a certain percentage of dollar amount to capital purchase. And it, if we don't have a lot of other competing things, then we, we would have the capital available. Yeah, but that's, I'm trying to save money, not what's available. Right. Right. Anyway. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're good. So. Thank you. Going to put things on hold. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much very for your time and your information. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. Kevin, Chuck, Kevin, thank Kevin, you thank very you. much. Chuck, no thank you very much for the data that you provided. I really do appreciate that. No problem. If there's anything else you need, more answers. Chuck, I'm really impressed. Thank you. Well, yep, thank you. Appreciate you coming in. I'll leave them with that. Sure. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, do you want to look at that, Jack? Sure. You, you might want to look at it. I like these. I like these numbers. Just a couple, a couple more things to uh, address here, if, if we have a few minutes, if you don't mind. One, we did not vote the minutes, the amended oh, yeah. minutes. <laughs> now, do we want to vote the amended minutes now? Yes. Or do we want to yes. make the... No, 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 no. Let's, let's do it so we stay okay. current. We were out here, so... So we're current, right. Okay. Yeah. So, we went through... I make a motion... Minutes. Right. I had made the motion um, to approve the, men, uh, the amended, amended mode, min minutes. Amended okay. Mode, uh, yeah. Is there a second? I'll nice. second. Okay. It's been seconded. So, all, uh, any other discussion on the minutes? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Now, one last thing before we close here. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, adjourn um, the selectmen's meeting at 7.30. Is that okay with you, Kip? I make the motion. Second. Can you second? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, the Selectman's meeting closed at 7.30. Okay. For the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, what I did was I did a quick little summary of where we were at. And if you start with the top, I'm just going down. Uh, as far as I just read through these, if anybody has a different perspective on it, please let me know so I can make corrections. But this, I believe, will give us some direction as far as what we've already accomplished and where we need to head. 
uh, the generator, we recommended. The uh, transfer station fence, we recommended. The transfer station compactor, we recommended. The senior center carpet tile project, uh, we recommended. And that was at 8,300, but we, uh, even though it sh fell short of $10,000, I felt it was important to put in here because we did discuss a possible overrun because of unpredictable you know, issues there. So, thank you, thank you for doing that. And then uh, the second year of a third year plan on the Deerfield Elementary School as far as the flooring, and then also as far as the hardware. Yep. And then obviously the freight liner for the Public Works Highway Department is in progress. The digital town records, uh, no action is ta was taken, and we don't need to at this at this time. Uh, the request they feel will fall in the five thousand seven thousand dollar range. That comes under the ten thousand uh, dollars. Barbara did approach the CPA and found out, unfortunately, that they did not feel that that qualified for CPA money. So she's gonna take another route and look at uh, different alternatives and different funding at, at this time. The uh, library project, we asked them to resubmit. We thought it was a year too early and resubmit for next year. And then we get into the request uh, senior community center. There is $25,000 and you can do a cross reference on our uh, spreadsheets. There is a $25,000 request, but there is no paperwork on it. Um, uh, I, think, I think that we might um, request some money from the CPA to do um, the steeple restoration okay. and, and, and not do, the, I mean, because we don't, we don't, well, that's why I say we we don't own it, but I right. don't think there's really a question that we would want right. to do restoration of the steeple one way or the other as soon as we got that. That's not one of those things that would be into question. Mm -hmm. Whereas we don't have a game plan for the rest of the building because we right. haven't hired an architect. Been, yeah. So I think And that's why I say we just we just yeah, left it at Kip, no Kip had kinda table. talked about it but we weren't really sure what we were gonna do. So right. that's why there's no action. Right. Skim's request uh, is on hold at this moment until we can obtain additional information. And that request was a total of about 145,000. And the oversight board, uh, Skim's oversight board, will be discussing that. And then project, uh, projected costs without requests, but appear in the five-year plan. The health and building code repairs, uh, there's a request for $45,000 no paperwork on it so we can't I know. take uh, any it's, action it's on it. It's because we don't really have a game plan yet. Right, okay. And then the South Deerfield, the headworks as far as the wastewater treatment, there's a $20,000 request, no paperwork on that, so we can't act on actually, that. Actually, the selectmen need, might be submitting a request for um, an Agamont or, or channel cleaner. Right, yes. A, a, a kind of like a temporary thing. head right. headworks. Yes, yeah. okay. Um, but that might be like 200,000. Okay. So um, I, I know, Kip, did you make it to the um, show to find out what the actual price might be? I did not. Oh, okay. Just we, we don't have a quote for that yet, but okay. Kip thinks it's around 200,000. We just spoke with Kevin uh, at the beginning of the meeting about the $5,000 request for the attendant building at the transfer station, and that's put on hold, so we do not have to address that at the time. Uh, the $5,000, if that stays as $5,000, we would not have to address it anyways, because it's under $10,000. Uh, the new voting machine has been ordered and is has arrived. Yeah. So... That is here, the new voting machine is. Uh, the highway motor, a uh, mower, that's an ongoing five-year plan of the $26,000. That had already been approved. The salt shed, these are 2018 requests. The salt shed, shed uh, transfer station, that has been uh, repaired and uh, will be painted in the spring. 
and then the first year of the flooring and the hardware for the Deerfield Elementary School uh, is in the process and the drainage foyer that they requested $6,500 for has been completed. Uh, the replacement ambulance uh, for 2018 was approved. That's ongoing annually. Uh, the medication pumps, administration pumps from EMS, SCEMS, uh, that's on hold, and I believe it was due to some state regulations well, having um, been completely yes, determined. Yes, because um, Zach had put in that request because it looked like the regulations were going to come this year, right? And, and we would need to be in compliance. Right, and Zach obviously. wanted to make sure that. But um, the <clears throat> there was a lot of pushback because of the model they had, whatever it was that we were supposed to be putting in. There was pushback because there was questions on if it was really um, met the specs for what they wanted to be done or something mm -hmm. like that. I can explain oh, that issue. Thank you. Yeah, um, okay. I'm familiar with it. Yep. The problem is that the there's a new regulation for these pumps to be on the ambulances. Mm -hmm. However, the FDA has not approved pumps for ambulances. Okay. So there's a little bit of a so yeah. Zach didn't want to spend the money in case. Right. It was rejected. Right. Right. And, make sure and because right it's one. on hold right. statewide. And I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, statewide it makes, it's on hold right. because everyone is pushing back until right. they know that they for sure has to yeah. invest in the right, right. model. Or this right. year on, right. on the last several items, I just wanted to do a follow-up on what was approved and what was completed or not completed. So, And then the power ambulance cop, cot loaders, uh, two were purchased, and they have those. Those are in place. Yes. Another thing at some point in time for this committee is we are also going to need to discuss the funding for 2019 for the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund because as of date, we already have recommended roughly about $120,000 uh, that we've already recommended. So there's additional, so with a truck that you're looking at, the $200,000 that we had put in that stabilization fund obviously is going to disappear. So we're going, we're going to need as a, as a committee to discuss that and see if we should recommend to the finance committee and the select board in the town whether to do another round of funding for that. Um, what well, would, yeah, but would we take... The stabilization fund is more like a long-term thing, isn't it? it, it and it requires a two-thirds vote of the town. Right. Well, that's to it, it is. It is. So, like, be. we put it in last year, then we're going to take it out this year. Right. Why I, are we I know. That for? Right. Well, that's so, that's why I say it's good. To me, that's a lot. The stabilization fund is like a long-term. Right. For well, well, that's kind of how I view it. But I have a feeling it that seems like I, I have a feeling that people are going to re be requesting, and that's what it's, you're absolutely right, Jack. It's going to come down to the town floor again. Well, because now we have, really we don't have many requests. The, the requests are relatively small other than the truck, mm -hmm. and which seems to me could be, it's not up to me to decide how things are paid for, but it seems like it come, could come out of free cash. Well, There's enough free cash that it, well, right? usually, Well, usually we have always done capital, um, funded capital improvement through free cash. Free cash. But, right. Our free cash is, we, we cover our, some of our operating budget with free cash, which you're not supposed to do, but we, we decided to keep our estimates conservative because everything, I mean, we were worried. But, uh, you know, we were doing okay. So, I, I mean, so, I would continue to have... So my uh, cheat sheet in, in yeah. my mind is if the if free cash is $1.2 and we only have, what, like 300000 Total. Total, and we should have seven hundred thousand in free cash in that bank account, right? Then there's so then there's there's enough free cash. There's plenty the, of free the re cash. The reason there. you we were putting money into the stabilization because if we came up to a year that we didn't have enough free cash right. to fully fund our our capital plan, you don't want to short your capital right. plan because that's what we've done in the exactly. past. Exactly. Right. So then you vote. To transfer out of stabilization some money, but that means right. that we should whatever we recommend we take from free cash, but we also should recommend 
an amount, an amount to, to go additional into amount to go into the mm -hmm. stabilization right. to, right. to help us through a year when there is right. no free cash right. for stabilization. When did you have a question or comment? I'm sorry, I might have missed it. You said it. Is the compactor in there this year? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And that has been recommended. Well, the flooring's getting done, I believe, at winter break here. And the heart, uh, locksmith was over there doing a lot of hardware um, key changes out and stuff last week. So, some of that. Right. Year so that's year ongoing, year. right. And that, and that was a three-year plan. We're in the second year, right. Okay. But anyway, you're, you're right that we would have to decide, right, how much, how much should go into the, how much we're recommending to go mm -hmm. into the... Well, what we would do is recommend it. <laughs> and then, Excuse me. Then the finance committee looks at it, right. and the select board looks at it, right. and we all try to come up with a consensus amount that makes sense. Whether it's appropriate from or not. Operating yeah. point of view, because, like yeah. I said, a certain percentage covers our operating. Um, okay. Budget. Should we set another date here? It's fine. Sure. I mean, I. I it would be nice to finish up. We really. could kind of clean this up. This list up, and why I say if you look it over, I, if anybody has any you, input um, or when do you think you would have um, that channel cleaner quote? I'm going to call Josh and get a, a name of a couple of contractors and just pass them. Okay. So if we can get the pay, do you think more than a week? I mean, do you need more I, than a week? I have no way of knowing. Okay, could we make it um, two weeks just in case um, Kip is having a little bit of trouble so we can submit that? That's, um, that's fine with me if that works for everybody. Okay. So we're looking at the 12th? February 12th? Yeah. yeah, attend on the 12th. Uh, oh. Do the 13th, I don't know if Tuesdays work for anybody. Or basically any other day. <laughs> do you want to put it off to the 19th? The 19th would be better than the 13th, but... The 19th would be better? For me, anyway. President's Day. President's Day. Day. President's Day is... Much, um, you can't have a meeting on... Can't have a meeting no. that day? No. It's not a legal meeting. Okay. How about the 15th, a Thursday night? Uh, the SCEMS board is not meeting until the 22nd. The oversight board. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. We, uh, there's too many meetings that night. I know. So, so with SCEMS the 15th, is the 22nd? SCEMS 22nd at 6 o'clock. Okay, so the 15th then? 15th, would that work for everybody? Yeah. should work, yeah. Okay. Kip, do you think that's enough time? Okay. Okay, no, I just, I didn't mean to, I don't want to rush, rush you, but. That's a couple of weeks, so. Yeah, I think that will be okay. Could, could we, could we call Auger Monster? Fifteen. You want me to try it? That's the name of the company. I'll try it. Yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, I'll get yeah. my TPO magazine. Here, I'm, I'm trying I'll to think of the committee. Oh, yeah, CIPC. Auger Monster. You'll get yeah. that brand. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, Kip was cautioning me against using Auger Monster okay. because it's like using a band aid. You can buy CVS band aids, and you can buy. Johnson & Johnson no, Band-Aid. Yeah. Just a yeah. So I've been trying to be careful and well, say Auger, channel yeah, cleaner. Is there anything else that we need to discuss for the capital improvement? No? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. Any other discussion? No. All in favor to adjourn? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jeff, for a lovely meeting. Seriously. Yeah. That was